housekeeping items here. And we'll go ahead and go over these. So for those of you that I haven't met before, my name is Ashley de Blasi. I am your Assistant Director of Professional Development at IIMC here, and I'll be facilitating your meeting. The Institute Director and Education Chair Colloquium has always been your meeting. So I'm very specific when I say that I'll just be facilitating and helping connect you. We'll guide you and we're gonna provide you with the content of all of the answers that we received from your registration forms. But ultimately, this is your meeting. This is your time to connect, your time to collaborate, your time to idea exchange. So to help go through this meeting efficiently, especially in a virtual environment, Let's go over a couple of housekeepings. Um, like we had mentioned in the beginning, please turn off any extra electronic devices. There's nothing worse than somebody speaking and having your Outlook notifications popping up, your cell phones ringing, TVs, dogs barking. So do the best you can to silence any extra noise. Um, anytime you're not speaking, it's best if we mute the microphones. We do have the ability to use the raise hand feature. You can physically raise your hand if that works, but our communications coordinator, Karen Lee, Karen, if you'll just raise your hand or start waving at everybody, Karen will be monitoring and she'll help me figure out if there's a hand raised, somebody needs to say something, somebody has a question, we'll be monitoring it that way. That way we don't have people unmuting and muting themselves all at the same time. So please just be respectful. Um, we'd also like you to do your best to have your camera on. If you can have that video on, great. If not, completely understandable. And again, with that, we will be recording this meeting. So in order for us to do so, um, keeping your camera on gives us permission to do so and record your face. If you're uncomfortable having that recording or being a part of that recording, you're welcome to keep your camera off. If you don't want to have your name on there, you're also welcome to rename yourself. Um, let's take a look. We will be utilizing the chat box feature. So on the bottom of your Zoom controls, there's a chat box. It looks like a little speech bubble. You can click on that and send a private message to Karen Lee, which has Karen Lee IIMC. If there are any questions, you can also just drop general questions in there to the entire group. We'll be monitoring that and Karen will help me watch that chat box. During breaks, we'll review that as well and see if there's any questions that we need to address during the breaks. Um, speaking of breaks, we do have two planned throughout this meeting. I know that three hours is a long time to sit here on a Zoom call. So we have every hour about a five to seven minute break planned. If the group feels we don't need to take it, we don't have to and we can continue to work through simply because we are very limited on time today but stretching, using the restrooms, making phone calls, all very important. So if we feel that those be, need to be built in, we definitely have space for that. Um, throughout the meeting, about the second hour or so, we're gonna start to break you up into breakout groups. Normally at the colloquium, we have the small round tables. Everybody can turn around and collaborate together. Obviously we don't have that here in this setting. So we've done our best to go ahead and put together some breakout rooms. We have broken you guys up by regions. Some regions had very, very few participants in them, so we've combined regions, and you'll see as we do that, so your breakout rooms will be numbered. If you've never used breakout rooms before, what is going to happen is we will push a breakout room option on our screen. It's gonna send an invitation to your phone or your computer, whichever device you're logged in on. All you have to do is accept by pushing that button or clicking that button and it'll take you over to your breakout room where you will meet with your region and potentially other regions that fit inside in your group size. Um, when it's time to come back from those meetings, we'll have you push that same button, we'll send you an invitation and it'll give you a 60 second warning that your breakout group is going to be dismantled and be brought back to the rest of the group. All right. Are there any questions before we start with some introductions? If there are, you are welcome to raise your hand and let me know. All right, so let's go ahead and start with introductions then. So I would like to first off remind everyone that Karen Lee is going to be our communications coordinator here with IIMC. She's also our tech guru. So if there are any questions, Karen will be there. And Karen, if you wanna go ahead and unmute, introduce yourself real quick and make any last minute tech announcements, you are welcome to do so. Well, I certainly have no last minute tech, tech suggestions. I think you covered it all, Ashley. 
Um, I am Karen Lee, um, very happy to be here. And I am I was saying earlier how um, even though I can't meet you all in person, at least I can see you all uh, on, on my screen, even if you're this big. Uh, and I'm looking forward to today's meeting um, and learning more. This whole month has been a learning time for me. So thank, thank you, Karen. Thank you, Karen. I would also like to introduce our brand new IIMC president, Mary Johnston. So Mary, if you'd like to unmute and say hello and say a few words, you're welcome to do so. Hi everyone, um, welcome to the meeting. I wish we could all be together and, but uh, wasn't meant to be, but look forward to the meeting. I apologize, I do have to leave a little early, but I look forward to the discussion prior to my leaving and watching the recording to see what happens afterwards. So thank you for all your work. I appreciate it. Perfect. Thank you, Mary. We also have immediate past president, Lana McPherson. So Lana, you're welcome to say a few words, introduce yourself. Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to see your faces this morning and uh, give a big round of applause to our president, Mary Johnston. I, I just, when Chris told me about our cancellation and what had been decided, my first thing I thought of was, oh no, Mary isn't going to get all of her big party in St. Louis, but we are clerks and we just pick up and go on. So we'll figure out a party later on. I told Chris that uh, I think my whole year started out with the fire alarm in Birmingham. That was the first time that had ever happened in an IIMC <laughs> meeting. But as my uh, dear clerk sister Kitty Kapitki said, hey, thousand people in less than three minutes out of that room. So you know, we're city clerks. We've been trained well. Everyone was up and out. And uh, it's been a great time, even though I've had to miss some conferences. Some have been postponed, but it was a wonderful year. And um, my husband said when I came home after the meeting on Wednesday and he said, well, now I guess you're the, the PP. And I said, yes, the past president. And he says, no, you'll be remembered as the pandemic president. Mm -hmm. I told him it was a good thing he didn't have a career in comedy because it wouldn't have gone very far. But I would be remiss if I didn't say congratulations to Cassie being Institute Director of the Year. Cassie does some great programs and I've been, yay, look at all those hands, Cassie. I've uh, been able to sit in on some of her conferences and things that Cassie has done. And my own Kansas ID is on here. So welcome, Miss Morgan. It's good to see your smiling face. Again, thank you, Ashley, um, and all of the IIMC staff for the past year and especially to our executive director, Chris Shelby, who has answered a million questions for me. So I look forward to participating today, and I too may have to leave uh, before it's over, but I'll do my best to hang in with all of you. Thank you again for the opportunity and the great pleasure to have served as your IIMC president. Take care. Thank you, Lana. Um, before we get to all the Institute Directors, um, a couple of other people that I'd like to introduce. We have Kelly Sigson, who she's a couple screens over for me. She's our IIMC Education Associate. She's waving. Um, Kelly, if you want to unmute, you're welcome to. Otherwise, just give them a hello. Hi, everybody. Just want to say good morning. I don't have anything to add yet. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thank you, Kelly. Um, and finally, we have our Executive Director, Chris Shelby. So, Chris, you're welcome to join the group say hello Thank you thanks Ashley good morning good morning everyone uh, what a great turnout uh, good to see a lot of you on these little squares and uh, welcome and I know I will come back and give you a brief update on the board meeting from uh, from last week so uh, I look forward to uh, today's colloquium thanks Ashley absolutely so if for the sake of time today, I do want you all to have the opportunity to introduce yourself, say hello, so we know whose faces we're looking at for the next three hours. But because we are limited to time, I'm going to ask that we don't take any more than 30 seconds or so to introduce yourself. So I thought what we could do is go ahead and tell me who you are, where you're from, um, and if you're, uh, most of our clerks are used to just saying town of, city of, give us a state, country, province, give us somewhere to actually place you. 
So tell us who you are, where you're from, and then maybe just a quick update on what you're most looking forward to taking away today, if anything. I'm gonna go ahead and call on you guys as you're outlined on my screen. That way we don't have to go through um, unmuting or who's gonna go first. So Ms. Sharon Kassler, I have you first. You are up, say hello, tell us where you're from. Of course, as soon as you did that, my phone rang. Um, Sorry. <laughs> I am from Cambridge, Ohio, small town in uh, the southeast part of Ohio. And um, I am CPAS president from 2010 to 2011 and currently serving as co-chair for the Professional Development Committee for Ohio. So um, I, I've always enjoyed the colloquium. I think I've attended it every year that I've attended a conference. Um, I just love the information sharing. So that's what I'm looking forward to. Thank you, Sharon. Alice Atwood. Good morning, everyone. Um, as Ashley said, I am Alice Atwood. I am the city clerk treasurer from the city of Tenasket, Washington, north central Washington, about 20 miles from the Canadian border. Um, it's a very small town. I am also the education coordinator for the Washington Municipal Clerks Association. And I am here to learn, as always. i uh, like to see what's going on in, with other institutes. And of course, um, just here to learn. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Sarah Schneider. Good morning, I'm Sarah Schneider. I'm the director here for Wyoming. I live in Casper, Wyoming. And um, I'm very excited to always see what everybody else is doing and how they're making things work, especially now with all of our COVID challenges. So I look forward to just seeing what's happening out there. Thank you, Sarah. Casey Paxton. Good morning, um, Casey Paxton from Ketchikan, Alaska. I am the education director for Alaska. I also serve on our Northwest Institute committee with uh, Joan Tilton as our director. And I'm uh, interested in really learning some information on how to conduct our institute, academy, and conference, maybe in a hybrid method. So not fully Zoom, not fully in person, but a hybrid method. Um, thinking that we will have uh, some in person and quite a few without travel funds this year and have, have to uh, mesh the two together. Thanks. Thank you, Casey. Pamela Miller. Good morning. It's good to see everybody. I'm happy to be here. Uh, I am Pamela Miller. I am one of two institute directors in California. My institute is the Master Municipal Clerk Academy. I'm looking forward to just you know, uh, sharing information. It's always a good information exchange with this group. And in particular, uh, learning for the, from those who already have transitioned their institute online. Thank you. Thank you, Cameron. Ann Eaker. I can skip you, Ann, if somebody walked in. <laughs> my mirror just made me jump, but that's okay. Good morning, my name is Ann Eaker. I'm the city clerk treasurer with the city of St. Francis in Wisconsin, and I'm also our education chair for our state association. And I'm really hoping that we will get some great input on how we move forward with our new normal for training and education. I know Cassie's got it locked on for our institute, but um, I'm hoping we can walk away with some great tips and tricks. Thank you, Ann. Linda Hess. Good morning, everybody. Linda Hess, I'm from Arizona State University. I'm the Institute Director for the Arizona Municipal Clerks Association and a Senior Program Manager for ASU for my center. Um, I really just really look forward to the collaboration and discussion about the directions that we're all moving into and how we can help each other achieve offering education points to the clerks so they can receive their certification, especially during these types of catastrophes. And I, again, I love just seeing everybody. I was looking forward to attending um, in person as I'm sure everyone else was. So. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> Thank you, Kitty Kapitke. 
Hello, everybody. I am current. I'm in Streamwood, Illinois, about 35 miles due west out of Chicago. Sorry, no video capability here, but um, I am the current chair of our Education Training Institute Committee, and I will be working hand in hand with Peggy Brown. Again, this is not my first round on this committee, and I've participated in the colloquium in the past. Love all the ideas, and it's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Katie. Brenda Schneider. Let's see if I can help you, Brenda. Try that. No, no audio, Brenda. Let me, let me try Dawn and then we'll come back to you, Brenda, okay? Okay, let's try Dawn Abrahamson. Go ahead and we'll come back to Brenda. Good morning, everyone. Dawn Abrahamson. I'm the city clerk from the city of Vallejo, California, which is a mid to a large size city. I am Region 9 Director, and I'm also the Board Liaison to the Education Committee. So I'm here to learn, absorb. Um, education is one of my passions. I'm a trainer, and I'm really here to support our Region 9 Institute Directors. Thank you, Don. Let's try Brenda one more time. Nope, nothing yet. Okay, Brenda, I'm going to have Karen work with you, and we'll come back to you in a few minutes, okay? All right, Maureen King. Morning, everybody. I'm really excited to see so many familiar faces and to meet some new people. Um, I am the other California Institute Director. You met Pamela. Um, I'm in Riverside. Riverside is, you look at California, between San Diego and Los Angeles and a little inland. And it's where the University of California Riverside is, one of the UC campuses. Um, so the institute that I do is held at UCR. Looking forward to best practices, um, kind of being able to really learn from other people's experiences as we use temporary methods and permanent methods and, and really seeing what we can take away. So thank you, Ashley, for offering to have um, another session if it's something that we want to do. Absolutely. Thank you, Maureen. Tammy Tisdale. Hi, um, Tammy Tisdale. I am the city clerk in Gretna, Nebraska. Um, I'm the education chair committee for our institute. I work with um, Ellen Freeman Wakefield to put our uh, institute together. Uh, I'm just here to get some new ideas and see what everybody else is doing, how they're handling the situations. Thank you, Tammy. Now this next person, everyone, I think we should give her a very special welcome. I'm going to share my screen for just a moment, but our next up is going to be our 2020 Institute Director of the Year, Cassie Van Remortel. Very excited, very much deserving of this very prestigious award. So go ahead, Cassie, unmute yourself and say hello. Hi, I'm Cassie Van Remortel. Um, I'm from the University of Wisconsin Green Bay. And I'm here to learn from you. And I'm very honored that I received this um, award. It means a lot to me. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. And Cassie, just as an FYI, everyone, if you need program ideas, she's taken her entire July Institute online. So we'll hear from her later. We'll definitely chat and see how the heck she did it and what we can all do to hopefully catch up. Um, Ellen Freeman Wakefield. Hi, I'm Ellen Freeman Wakefield from Omaha, Nebraska at the University of Nebraska, Omaha. I'm here to learn best practices and um, how to get this all moving forward. Thank you, Ellen. Claire Kinane. Good morning, my name is Claire Kinane. I'm the Institute Director in Georgia at the University of Georgia. And I'm happy to be here and see everyone. I'm disappointed we couldn't come together, but I'm eager to hear what others are doing and how to plan for short-term and long-term repercussions from the pandemic. Thank you, Claire. Pamela Harvey. Hey, I'm Pamela Harvey from the University of Alabama. I'm the Institute Director for the State 
and this will be my second time attending. Um, I attended last year in Birmingham and I learned so much that I decided that I would never miss this again. So um, I'm just happy to be here. Thank you. Absolutely, we're glad you're here. Kim Jones? Hi, everybody. So good to see all of you. Like Pamela just said and others have said, I'm so sorry that we couldn't meet in person. I was really looking forward to it. So I'm the Institute Director in Arkansas, where it is very stormy right now. So welcome everybody. Looking forward to a good day. Thank you, Kim. Nancy Taylor. Good morning, everyone. I'm Nancy Taylor. I'm the Executive Director for the Local Government Management Association of British Columbia. And we're based in Victoria, uh, BC, Canada. Um, I am so grateful for IAMC for putting this opportunity together. So Ashley, thank you to you and your team for that and really happy to have so many of you available today. Uh, we are, like many of you, trying to imagine what the future looks like and whether or not what we're experiencing now is going to have longer term repercussions for our programming. So uh, really grateful for the opportunity as well to learn and listen from others uh, what you're thinking, what you're talking about with your uh, institutes and your members. So thank you again. Thank you, Nancy. Steve Kleiger. Uh, good morning. I'm the Institute Director for the State of Connecticut, and we're located at Central Connecticut State University in New Britain, uh, about 10 miles from Hartford. And Connecticut has been one of the strictest states with the lockdown during the pandemic. So I'm anticipating that uh, we are most likely going to be doing it virtually for a while. So I'm certainly interested in getting ideas and, and looking at collaborations, as I know Ashley has started already. Uh, for, for shared programming and, and that type of thing. Thank you, Steve. Peggy Brown. Hi, everyone. I'm from the state of Illinois, and I work with the Municipal Clerks of Illinois, and I'm proud to be here today. I'm like everyone else. I just learned, want to learn what I can in case we cannot meet. We're fortunate enough that our Institute Academy is not till mid-October. We may or may not be back to normal by then, but I don't know if we'll be able to have a meeting with 200 plus people. So that's what my main concern is for October. But I'm just hoping to learn what other options we have at this point. Thank you, Peggy. Shira. Oh, unmute yourself, Shira. Okay. I always forget. I'm there Shira Alberti Anunzio. I'm with the University of Nevada, Reno, and I run the Nevada Institute. Um, actually started the Nevada Institute a number of years ago. I, uh, for, we have not had the opportunity to participate a lot in the colloquium because we just don't have the monies and the funds to be able to send someone to this. We're a very, very small institute, anywhere between 15 and 20 once a year. So we're really, really small. But I, I really appreciate being able to be in this video. And even if you went live, um, it might be a great opportunity down the road to have the option for people who can't travel to still participate in the colloquium if they can't go to the national conference, but still participate in the conversation. Um, with that said, it's just an idea. I will be retiring in July. So I want to introduce the interim director who's coming on board um, in my position, Shannon Harris. She'll be able to introduce herself a little bit more when Ashley calls on her. But I did want her to be able to sit in and, and kind of see the faces of all the people who are involved in this type of training and um, I'm interested to hear what's going to happen. We've been notified by a number of our cities that they have um, stopped all travel and training funds up to and including anything online. So we, we were looking for potentially a Zoom program, um, looking at live and then trying to look at Zoom. And at this point, it doesn't even look like they're going to be able to pay for anything that's online either. So that's going to be a real, a real challenge. Wow. Thank you, Shira, and congratulations on the upcoming retirement. We are going to miss you, but it was great that you were able to do this with us. Um, I don't think you and I have ever met in person before, so no, great. To... Lots, lots and lots of mails and emails. Exactly. And... <laughs> yep, great to finally see your face. Um, while we're with Nevada, let's go ahead and talk to Shannon. Shannon Harris, if you want to unmute and introduce yourself, we'd love to hear from you. 
Hi, thank you. I'm Shannon Harris and um, thank you so much for allowing me to be here. I'm just going to um, observe and learn as much as I can. Um, I have um, some big shoes to fill with Shara and um, I'm just very grateful to be here and learn. Thank you so much, Shannon. We're glad you're here. I'm going to go ahead and go to my next screen here. Let's see, Sherry Pierce. Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm coming to you from Valdez, Alaska. I'm the city clerk for the city of Valdez, and I am the president-elect for IIMC. Good morning and congratulations, Cassie. And I am interested in uh, hearing from the institute directors today. So um, welcome, everybody, and um, happy Friday. Thank you, Sherry. Appreciate it. And Sabrina Reinhardt. I thank you for having this opportunity today. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, so my name is Sabrina Reinhardt. I work for the town of Leland, which is in North Carolina. And um, I am here today to learn about uh, the opportunities that you all are uh, offering in your states. Um, we actually did cancel our spring regional classes and we're supposed to have our summer academy in August. And um, we know so many uh, budgets have already been cut like a lot of others are talking about. And uh, I think, you know, we still plan on having it right now, but um, uh, I'm really interested to hear what you all have to say today. and. Just want to really learn from you from what you're experiencing and see what you have to say for me to bring that information back to our boards and committees. So thank you for allowing me to participate today. Thank you, Sabrina. Jason Camp. I'm Jason Camp. I'm an extension instructor with the Mississippi State University Extension Service. Um, I've been in this role with working with municipal clerks for about a year now. Um, I've had the opportunity to, to work with and meet some of the IIMC staff, and uh, they've been great. So um, I'm excited to uh, meet all of you guys and hear um, how we can improve our program here in Mississippi. Thank you, Jason. Camilla Pittman. Good morning and good afternoon to everyone. I'm Camilla Pittman. I'm a Region 3 Director uh, for North Carolina, South Carolina, Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. Uh, I'm from Greenville, South Carolina and serve as a city clerk there. Uh, I'm also a presenter and facilitator uh, for a number of states. And so I really want the opportunity uh, to see what I can do in creating new programs, hearing what your needs are, and also helping to work with our members as they pursue their certifications. And I'm here to support our institutes more than anything. Uh, we love all your assistance and the work that you do for our municipal clerks. Thank you. Thank you, Camilla. Uh, Tracy Borst. Hello from Vermont. Um, I am the clerk treasurer in Thetford, Vermont, small town, um, and I am um, the chair of the New England Institute, which consists of six small New England states. Um, I am excited. One, we've got an 80 degree day here in Vermont. This is unheard of in the summer, <laughs> May. So welcome to my porch. Um, I, I'm just excited to hear your ideas and uh, gather some inspiration from you for our institute. Thank you. Thank you, Tracy. Valerie Fox. Hi, I'm Valerie Fox. I'm the town clerk in Lincoln, Massachusetts. Hi, Ashley. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Valerie. It's so nice to see you. I feel like I know you, even though I don't. Um, so I'm the chair of the Mass Town Clerks Education Committee, and I am really looking forward to what we can bring to clerks because the education component is so important and what we can share for ideas of how to continue that with this climate. So thank you. Thank you, Valerie. Ashley Kent. Hi, thanks. Um, hearing Ashley 8,000 times is kind of throwing my, my brain off, so it's not about me, but that's okay. Um, I am Ashley Kent from Montana State University Extension Local Government Center. I'm on here with Dan Clark, who's our director. We provide the education for the clerks and treasurers in Montana. Um, and I'm really excited to hear all the great ideas because we always 
hear great things from, from the rest of the institutes and get to bring those back and make ours just a little bit better. So hopefully this year won't be any different. And Brenda Schneider, who is having some audio trouble, she's with us as well. She's the education chair for the association, the Clerks Association in Montana. Thank you, Ashley. Um, let's go right to Dan, since we're on Montana. Dan Clark. Good morning. Uh, I'm Dan Clark, the director of the Local Government Center at Montana State University, coming to you from a high mountain lake in Glacier National Park, as you can see behind me. Um, so I wish you could all be here. But yeah, we're very much interested in learning what others are doing, particularly in this uh, challenging time. Our institute would have been two weeks ago. Uh, so it was, a, it was a challenge for us to uh, uh, cancel the, the conference and we've gone to uh, an online platform. And so we're trying to make that transition, which uh, is opening up new uh, ideas for us, looking at this and uh, our institute delivery in a whole different way. So we are interested in learning from others what uh, strategies you're using to address uh, the, the education needs of your clerks. So thanks, uh, appreciate uh, you having us here. Thank you so much, Dan. Uh, Joan Tilton. Good morning, um, Ashley. I have an operator error going on here with my uh, laptop camera. So I'm gonna be working on that uh, as we as we speak. I appreciate the opportunity to be with everyone. So I'm Joan Tilton. I'm the Northwest Clerks Institute Director. Um, I, my program uh, serves the clerks of Washington, Oregon, and Alaska uh, through Washington State University. And um, I'm actually located in Manteca, California and was a um, longtime city clerk lifetime city clerk, we'll go with that, I'm retired as a city clerk in my hometown. I've been retired for about four years now. So congratulations to those of you who have uh, upcoming retirements, you're gonna love it. And my guess is you'll still be involved somehow, somewhere uh, with clerks. It just, it just never ends, I'm telling you, and that's a good thing. Um, I'm looking forward to hearing the creative ideas, just as everyone else has said, I'm glad we have the opportunity to do this. Um, and, uh, you know, also it's, it's probably no accident that this is my first uh, dealing with Zoom and so I'm learning and who knows, maybe by the end of the call, you'll actually see my face. It, it could be a good thing that I'm not showing my face to everyone, but um, so thank you, Ashley, and uh, be patient with me. <laughs> Thanks, Joan. Well, welcome to Zoom. We'll <laughs> thank you. It'll be a pro before the end of the day. Okay. Amy Brewer. Good morning, and I love saying good morning, even though it's afternoon here. I'm from Tallahassee, Florida. I work with the Institute Director, Jeff Hendry at the Florida State University, and uh, I do a lot of the coordinating of speakers and different sessions and work closely with the uh, Florida Association, their Education Committee, and I'm really glad to be here today with all of you to hopefully get some new ideas and forge new paths and bring it back to our association. So thank you. Thank you, Amy. Uh, Allison Berkey. Hey everyone, I'm Allison Berkey. I'm uh, the Director of Community Outreach at the Riley Institute at the College of Charleston in South Carolina. And we work with the Municipal Association of South Carolina in their Municipal Clerks and Treasurers Institute. Um, definitely happy to be here and just looking forward to the exchange of information and some best practices that we can use going forward. So thanks. Thanks, Allison. Amy Holt. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm from Arkansas, but I'm the Institute Director for the great state of Texas um, and happy to be here. And I do have to give a shout out to Cassie. Um, congratulations. I wish I could hug you, but this is my um, I'm in my seventh year in this role and Cassie was one of my very, very first IIMC friends. So I'm so excited for her and proud of her. Um, certainly I'm here to learn too. Um, I'm interested to know how many of you have moved forward at this point with anything in person. We're about to have an in-person event. Um, normally it would be a little over 200 people. Right now we've got 89 registrants for an event in San Antonio. Um, so we're moving forward. I won't be attending. Um, but we've got a lot of people that, that will be. So I'm uh, excited to learn today. Thank you, Amy. Definitely keep us in the loop on how it goes. Kona Rogers. 
Hi, good afternoon. I'm the Institute Director in Tennessee. I work for the University of Tennessee, but I am stationed down in Chattanooga. And I think today I've really been trying to learn ways to connect with our members other than conferences, just trying to think what value are they getting from being a member of, we call it TAMCAR here, uh, what makes it worth paying their dues that are coming up pretty soon, and just how can we serve clerks other than the typical fashion. We had to cancel our April conference. We will be deciding next month about our September conference. So that's where we're at in Tennessee. Thank you, Han. Elizabeth Copeland. Good morning. Um, I'm from the Municipal Association of South Carolina, and I work with our Clerks Association and with the Institute in planning meetings. So I'm excited to learn more. We've canceled lots of our meetings, but we were able to get our Spring Institute session in bef before the pandemic hit. And we are planning the fall meeting, but we're still talking to figure out if that is going to go forward. Thank you. Jordan Todd. Hi, good morning, everybody. I'm with the University of Alabama, and I am the assistant to the Institute Director for the State of Alabama, and this is my first time attending, and I'm looking forward to learning today. Thank you, Jordan. Jennifer Janice. Good morning, everyone. I'm Jennifer Janice. I'm the Institute Director for the State of Minnesota. Um, I work with St. Cloud State University. Uh, nice to see everyone here online today. And I'm looking forward to learning about all of the innovative ways that folks are dealing with recent challenges. Thank you, Jennifer. Shauna Friels. Good morning, this is Shauna Friels. I'm the city clerk in the city of Gilroy, California, and I am the professional development director on the board of the City Clerks Association of California. And I'm, this is my first colloquium, so I'm really excited to hear how this uh, transpires, and I'm definitely here to support our institute directors. Thank you, Shauna. Morgan Barnes? Good morning, um, I'm Morgan Barnes with the City Clerks out of Kansas. I'm the Institute Director there. Um, I'm excited to be here. This is one of my favorite um, things through IIMC. I am hoping to learn that um, as we talk about these things, I'm hoping we'll get something that we will all move forward with that won't change, right? Everything has changed because of this pandemic, but what is, what is going to change that we can carry forward that will be the best part of what we do for our clerks, which is support them. So I'm excited. I love that, Morgan. Thank you. Charles Taylor. Hi, everybody. I'll turn my video on for a minute. I got uh, bandwidth issues here. Things just seem to work a little better um, without it. But I, I'm the, the Institute Director uh, for the Indiana uh, Clerks and, and Clerk Treasurers. We were fortunate to um, have our Institute and Academy the first week in March, right before everything came unraveled. We've had to cancel the annual meeting that normally happens in June. We're hopeful that the regional meetings that happen in the fall will, will continue, um, but uh, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, interested in learning what people are doing to, uh, you know, deal with, with um, you know, these, these issues and, you know, maybe what they'll be dealing with as things open back up, trying to have um, you know, large groups of people meet together safely. Thanks. Thank you, Charles. Lindsay Turlington. Hi, everyone. I'm Lindsay Turlington from Oklahoma State University in Stillwater, Oklahoma. And I just started as Institute Director in January of this year. So I'm really looking forward to learning from everyone today. Perfect. Welcome, Lindsay. Thank you. Pamela Smith. Hi, everybody. I could not get my camera to work, so I apologize that you can't see me. I'm not that pretty anyway, but um, I am the new vice president. I am so excited for this next journey, and I have attended a colloquium, and I have trouble saying that in the past, but uh, it was very informative. I am very um, 
interested in what you do, how you do, what we can do for our members of each state and IMC and how we can make it better. So I am very appreciative to be on this call today. Thank you, Pamela. Denise Jordan. Denise, I can see you unmuted, but I don't hear you. Try one more time. Okay, we will come back to you, Denise. Let's try, let's see, who do I got next? Uh, Gail Ruland. Hello, everybody. Can you hear me properly? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yeah, I'm also uh, uh, have very low bandwidth. Living in country life is wonderful when it works. But uh, that is why you'll just be looking at my picture, which has a lot less wrinkles because it's nice and old. And uh, I, I'm actually with St. Cloud State also. Um, I work along with Jennifer Janesey. We uh, basically prepare um, the Municipal Clerks Conference Institute and Advanced Academy. And we did have to cancel um, our conference, which was to take place March 16th. And that was pretty much when everything um, got put to hold uh, in Minnesota. And then we did uh, take our institute and move it from May to uh, July. But even that is looking like it is not going to be able to be happening um, face to face. Primarily, we have issues with um, uh, half of the instructors and um, probably half participants are very leery about the idea of uh, meeting face-to-face. -face. So we're looking for alternatives. Um, our instructors, uh, majority of them would be very happy if we turned it into a virtual. And we do have, again, D2L, Zoom platform, um, media space for recording, that type of thing. But again, the concern from our clerks um, and the uh, association president in particular said, how do we assure that they receive the same bonding experience that we have when they do the phase to phase? Because we do all sorts of interactive type um, uh, events. Uh, we have, ours is a three year institute. So they attend three years in a row. It's held Monday through Friday, um, uh, 8 to 5.30, and then Friday till noon. And in the meantime, our year activities give them the opportunity to really form a very cohesive group. They, you know, will design t-shirts, they'll have special social hours, they'll, you know, and so we're trying to see how can we create that kind of environment in a virtual, and I know there's ways to do it, and I'm hoping that there's uh, some real ideas that come through here. Um, we also have a question as to if a person attends, how do you make sure that um, that they're actually attending for the full time? And I know there's different various ways to do that too, but again, hopefully getting some ideas for us to potentially pull something together for our clerks, because again, their educational experiences and points are, are dear to them. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, Gail. Yeah, definitely lots. Of, I think we all have a lot of the same questions. So thank you for that. We will definitely try to cover all of it today. Um, Diane Flugfelder. All right, Diane, we'll come back to you. Teresa Hudson. Good morning. Good afternoon. I'm joining you from Milford, Delaware. I am a re the Region 2 Director, and I am looking forward to yet another learning experience with IIMC, and am anxious to spend some time with all of you today and hopefully learn some new ideas and that I can take back to Region 2 and Delaware in particular because they have a brand new Region Director and Ashley, I don't see her on here. Did she respond? I haven't gotten a registration from her as of, as of this morning, so I don't think she signed up. Okay, with that said, I'll pay much closer attention. So okay, <laughs> thank you for that. Last but not least, Peggy Hawker. 
Good morning, everyone. This is Peggy Hawker. I am the City Recorder and Special Projects Director for the City of Newport, Oregon, on the Oregon coast. We've been pretty much shut down here since uh, mid-March. In fact, our hotels have been closed for two and a half months and still not open. Uh, we in Oregon, I am the Education Chair for our State Association. And I'm also on the Northwest Clerks Institute Committee where uh, we have three individuals from each of the three states uh, participate on a committee with Joan Tilton, our Institute Director to plan the Institute. So we had our April mid-year conference, state conference canceled because of this. Then our uh, Institute, which was to begin next week was canceled. And now our governor has said no gatherings in excess of hundred people until minimally the end of September. So uh, last week, our board canceled our in-person conference in September and directed the education committee to sort out the details in planning an online conference, a virtual conference. So I'm here today to hopefully pick up some tips on how to do that. Our committee will be meeting on June 3rd to try to sort it out, but um, hopefully I'll get a lot out of today. So thank you for this opportunity. Thank you, Peggy. We're happy you're here. Um, I think that's everybody on my screen. Did I miss anyone? Feel free to unmute yourself and let us know who you are. I know some of us were having audio issues, so feel free. If it's working now, you're welcome to pop on and join. Okay, so Chris Shalvey, our executive director, has a few updates for you regarding board meeting, task force, all kinds of good information. So I'm going to turn it over to Chris and let him provide you with an update. Thanks, Ashley, and uh, hello again. It's good to see a lot of you through these introductions. Um, before I get into the board update, let me just uh, provide you uh, briefly with what staff has been doing since uh, March 18th. Staff has been working from home. Um, I am in the office, I come in daily, and uh, staff comes in Monday through Friday, but it's specific staff, it's staggered, it's no more than two people coming in for half the day to get things done here and then the rest of the time they're working from home. Uh, and it seems to be working out pretty well. Um, although headquarters is in San Bernardino County, we're somewhat abiding by Los Angeles County restrictions as well as the state of California. And that could change in two weeks or it could be, uh, it could continue. Everything's indefinite right now. Uh, first and foremost, the staff safety. And then of course, dealing with uh, the members. And uh, I don't really think we've missed a beat. Um, and I echo everybody's sentiments about not being in St. Louis, uh, especially for outgoing President uh, Lana and incoming President uh, Mary Johnston. So um, last Friday, May 15th, IMC hosted its first virtual conference board of directors meeting via Zoom. And the 219-2020 board led by IMC President Lana McPherson heard reports from the IMC Foundation, which is doing well, but still needs our help. Um, all the IMC departments and committees, and we received an update on the 2020 annual conference, uh, including the announcement that St. Louis will be hosting the 2025 conference. The board reawarded that conference to St. Louis. All the work the host committee has put forward and we're bringing it back. Not to mention that between the city and the host um, group, the people that we worked with were able to remove all penalties. So on the good part of that financially, although we did not bring in any revenue, we will not be losing any money in terms of attrition and other penalties. So um, that was really kind of a highlight, not having a conference, at least we're able to escape that because I know a lot of other associations have taken major financial hits. Also want to let you know that our 75th anniversary leading into the Grand Rapids Michigan Conference next May uh, will begin later this summer and Grand Rapids will be going back to a five-day conference. The board wanted to give that an opportunity and then evaluate how the five-day versus a four-day conference went. So it'll be an extra day and probably more networking opportunities and more importantly um, addition of classes uh, for our members. The board meeting lasted approximately three hours and went very well. And um, here are some brief highlights. The board approved the new 2020-2023 strategic plan, which um, we plan on distributing to you next week. If there's anything in the plan in which you envision a collaboration with IMC, please let us know. 
Also want to thank Nebraska Institute Director Ellen Freeman Wakefield for working with the board these last three meetings to help us um, culminate this plan. Uh, the board also approved the 2019 annual budget, which should do well. The board approved moving forward with a partial year-end 219 audit uh, in consideration of reducing expenses as much as possible as we head into the second half of the 2020 fiscal year. Um, the board also approved, and I'm sure Ashley will talk about this later, a temporary online opinion dialogues between now and through January 2021. We've received uh, numerous requests to do these online, and I think the uh, Education and Professional Development Committee, which is chaired by Peggy Hawker, decided that that might be a good test for the next few months, and we'll go from there. Um, regarding the Education Task Force, as you know, the last year and a half, we've been working on visioning for IMC for the next three to five years. The task force met in Rancho Cucamonga last September. It was led by Dr. Long and Dr. Kathy Duncan. It was a fruitful meeting. The report was finalized and it was part of the board agenda for this meeting last week. However, the board voted to postpone the discussion until the November mid-year board meeting. I think they just felt that that kind of discussion is too valuable to hold through this kind of a platform and rather do it face to face. So fingers crossed that we will all meet in Southern California in November. Lastly, um, the board also approved uh, for staff and the executive committee to work together to develop a recruitment process regarding the position, um, the vacancy for the director of professional development. Several months ago, I sent all of you an email um, informing you that Dr. Uh, Jane Long, who's been our director of professional development um, as an independent contractor working out of Chicago that her contract will expire at the end of this month and uh, it will expire next week. We did ask Dr. Long if she wanted to sit in on the colloquium and I believe there was a scheduling conflict. So prior to the pandemic, um, staff was working with the education advisory group to put together an agenda regarding the St. Louis meeting. And part of that agenda was going to include a discussion regarding the position and to get your perspective and insight into what you think um, a future director of professional development would need, what you would expect from that position. And unfortunately, we're not in St. Louis. However, we still wanna create a composite. We still wanna get your perspective and your insight. And that's something that we will most likely set up hopefully in the next month or so. And we can do it through Zoom if that's convenient. We'll start the conversation through questions in an email gather that, and then for those of you that want to join us in a meeting, we'll do that again and get some ideas together as we move forward. As you know, it is an important position, always has been, and um, I do want to commend the current IMC Education Department for doing an outstanding job during this pandemic, but this is something that we will need to move forward on, depending on the 2021 budget, but at least we want to get our, um, our ducks in gear and, and move forward regarding that. Um, I have nothing else from the board meeting. I appreciate everything you're doing. I appreciate the fact that uh, we're all looking at different avenues of getting clerks involved with our institutes, picking up hours and points and working towards certification. Um, I tend to agree regarding a hybrid. Some of you have mentioned because it's never going to take the place of face-to-face -face institutes. That's what's important to us. So unless there are questions, Ashley, um, that's my report. Thank you for the opportunity and I'm going to, to remain for as long as I can uh, this morning. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chris. Are there any questions for Chris before we move on? You're welcome to raise your hand or literally wave and we'll go ahead and unmute you. Okay, I don't see anyone. Good. So from the education department, um, we have a couple of updates, just things we've been working on, things we want to share with you before we get into the real nitty gritty of today's meeting. Um, education department has been working with the Education and Professional Development Committee of IIMC to look at the Education and Institute guidelines. It's been about 10, 11 years now since we've really looked at both sets of guidelines as a whole 
to make sure that there's still relevant uh, things still apply to today's way of learning, today's clerk, today's certification. So over the past uh, probably six months now, we've been working on looking at these education and institute guidelines and doing exactly that, combing through them with a fine tooth comb just to make sure that the wording, the lingo, the way we're awarding credits, the way we're advertising information to our members is still accurate. So this committee has been looking at potentially streamlining those documents into one set as opposed to two. Right now we have the Institute and the Education Guidelines. There's a lot of redundancy in there. There's a lot of information that is a duplicate. So we thought it would be a great idea just to have one set of education guidelines and take the information in the Institute guidelines and drop it into those education guidelines as a subsection. That way there's one document. You don't have to sort through missing pieces, what's in this one, what's in that one. So, so far the process has been going really, really well. And Peggy Hawker is on this call. She's chairing that committee. Um, she's been doing a great job at spearheading that project for us and working with staff to go through and reorganize, re-update. No major changes are being made other than the fact that they're going to be one document as opposed to two. So we will bring this final set of guidelines to the Institute directors prior to taking it to the board for final approval. Um, once the Education and Professional Development Committee is comfortable with the final version and the final draft, we will bring that to you for review. Definitely want you to take a look at the Institute guidelines and make sure that they work for the way you're running your program, the way we want to see institutes heading in the future. There may be additions that can be made. There may be updates that can be done. So we definitely want to collaborate with you on that prior to bringing a final version of those guidelines to the Board of Directors for vote approval and then hopefully implementation. So if there's any questions on that, I would be happy to answer those. It's a work in process and I have a feeling that it'll be about 12 to 18 more months, hopefully um, not too, too long, but with this pandemic, we've kind of stopped the review process. So we'll figure out in the next couple of months how we can pick that up and bring that forward to you for review. Are there any questions? You're welcome to raise your hand. Or you can drop them in the chat box and we can address them individually too. Okay. The other thing that Chris did mention was that we did have the Board of Directors approve the opportunity to do Athenian Dialogues online. This was also a conversation that we had with the Education and Professional Development Committee and it was a great, great conversation. Very, um, very opinionated, very thoughtful, definitely a lot of work on that committee's part to weigh out the good and the bad. Um, ultimately, it was decided that these programs can be done online and that IIMC needed to make that adjustment to allow for learning to continue to happen in this day and age where we're at right now in the midst of this pandemic. So Athenian facilitators and hosting organizations such as uh, clerks associations and institutes now have the opportunity to conduct those online. Our requirements would fall that it does have to be a video meeting. Um, one of the big concerns was that somebody can turn their camera off and walk around the house, not participate for the six hours that are required and still get credit. So definitely going to be working on with each of the individual organizations that want to host to make sure that the requirements and the engagement is very clear about what the expectations are. So we're really looking forward to seeing these. I know a couple of, um, I know Dr. Holt in Texas already has one in, in process and I've gotten a couple others. I have yet to finalize the review on them, but we're looking forward to seeing how this goes. This is a temporary policy that the board approved that will be reevaluated at the mid-year meeting in November and then again in January of 2021 to see where we are and how we want to move forward with these. The other update that we want to provide you with is I know all of our institute directors have been involved in the conversation and the email exchange that our education department started regarding the virtual institute collaboration. Um, this one, if anybody has missed it, is an eight week series where we are working with eight of you on the phone today to put together two hour webinars for June and July. So these will be institute specific webinars showcasing your individual institutes, um, branding with your individual institute logos. IIMC is simply offering the support and the logistical support for these. All of the revenue earned from these webinars are going back to the individual institutes to help 
in whatever way IIMC can, whether you turn it into scholarship funds or you put it back into programming. We know it's not very much, but it'll be approximately $4,900 that goes back to each institute if we sell out those webinars. And with the amount of online learning that we're seeing now and the amount of registrations that we can actually track, we've had well over 5,000 online courses registered since April 1st. So following that model, going into these webinars that we have, each one will be 100 seats. I anticipate that these will sell out in a matter of minutes. So very excited to see how these go. Our education department is preparing for a riot on how we can handle those that can't get into those programs. Um, but we really want to try this out and see if there's a way that all of the institute directors can collaborate together, if it's possible, and how we can all step up together as a group for the greater good and the greater mission of continuing to educate our clerks. So we look forward to reporting back on how this program goes, how it's received. Um, I would love for the institute directors that are involved to be able to give you feedback on your, their direct experience with the process. And I still invite, if anybody is interested in participating and we want to extend this program, it's definitely something that we can consider once those eight weeks are up, we're going to readdress and reevaluate the entire program. So if there's anything that you guys need or questions you have regarding it, help you need, anything like that, feel free to reach out. Um, the education department is learning as we go too. But we feel it's really, really, really important that we don't turn our backs on the clerks right now. We really want to step up, show that we're trying, support the institutes, and still give everybody opportunities to continue learning. So that's all I have for an update. Are there any questions before we move on with our agenda? I'm just scrolling through the chat box looking for questions. Um, okay. So what we thought we would do before we really get into it is take a quick five minute break. Go ahead and give everybody a chance to use the restroom, stretch your legs. If you wanna turn off your camera, turn off your microphone. If it's unmuted, you're welcome to do so. Um, if you wanna stay in chat, you can go ahead and do that. That's fine. Um, I can also address questions that are in the chat box. So if you don't wanna pop off and take that break. Um, I know we have a question what is the fee for each of the two hour webinars? So each webinar, the institute directors worked collaboratively to come up with a pricing scale. Uh, we talked about everything from doing a free program to a very, very minimal $25 for each program, um, really bounced around a lot of ideas and we settled on $50 per webinar. Each one's gonna be two hours and because they're IIMC and institute level programming, they'll be one point each. So $50 for the 1.2 hours, they'll be conducted using Zoom. Um, we will be doing these as a webinar as opposed to a meeting. So the only thing that's gonna be different from what you see here today is we won't be able to do the small breakout rooms, which you guys are gonna to experience today. However, these will still be very interactive video webinars. There will still be an assessment that's completed at the end. And we've given each individual institute director the flexibility to select the assessment. IIMC staff will be helping to implement that. And majority of our institute directors have gone with a, a multiple choice final exam that we can go ahead and automate, which will help staff's perspective work load wise, support load wise. The neat thing about it too is that we're working with branding each of the certificates to look the same minus the individual institute branding logo. Um, these certificates will automatically be disseminated to the participants once they pass the final exam. So everything is trying to be made as seamless and as automated as possible to really lighten the work, one for the institute directors, but also for IIMC staff. We're a very, very small department and we want to step up and we want to help, but we also have to be very realistic with ourselves in terms of what we can do and what we can handle. So really looking forward to this one. Um, I got another question. Are the webinars hosted on IIMC's platform? Reason I ask is uh, St. Cloud, this is from Minnesota, has a Zoom platform as well. Yes, IIMC is gonna be handling all of, the, all of the logistics for it. So all of the technology expenses that are involved are gonna be approved by IIMC. Um, we purchased a license to do the, obviously the Zoom meetings like today, but we also purchased the webinar upgrade 
We purchased a program called FlexiQuiz that's going to be running our final assessments and certificate distribution. So those expenses um, have been incurred by IIMC, and when we pass that revenue generated from those programs onto the institute directors, we're only going to keep a very small, minimal $40 fee just to help us cover the cost of those expenses. So $4,900 for a little plus is going to be headed back to each of those individual institutes from IIMC. Um, our registrations through IIMC or through the, through the local university. IIMC is taking care of everything. As institute directors, we wanted you to simply show up and facilitate a session or work with a facilitator if you yourself are not a facilitator to deliver a program. We didn't want you to have to worry about handling registrations, phone calls, emails, questions, payments. So using our Zoom platform, um, we have put up registration for these webinars and that $50 fee will get charged right there through Zoom. So if you have questions uh, about how this program works, even if you're not interested in participating, but you want more information on what we've done for our program to share with your own institute or your own association, you're welcome to call or email me anytime. We can talk about how we did it, what our thought press was, what trials and tribulations we've had as well. Um, but we're gonna handle all of the logistics. So the institutes are simply going to be able to sit back, relax, show up, do your presentation, really highlight you and what your services are, and um, we will handle the rest. So we got a request to verbally share how to rename, add organization to the participant ID. Okay, Karen. Um, Karen, if you wanna unmute and help, you're welcome to, to run through that question. Ashley, uh, we got a, a request or a recommendation that uh, everyone add, if they can, their organization, office, any other identifier to your name. Uh, this is very uh, helpful, especially if you're new to the group. And I will repaste those directions in the chat, but I'll also let you know, I'll also tell you right now. Um, if you hover next to your name in the list, you'll see a option to choose more. And then after you click on more, there is an option, a prompt for you to rename. And then you can rename and add your organization. Let us know a little bit more about you. And I'll paste those directions in now. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Um, we got another question. Can we as IDs attend to these sessions too? The same as if we were attending the conference. Um, with the virtual institute, because we have such limited seats, what I would prefer is if you wanted to participate, reach out to me. I wouldn't ask that you take one of the seats simply because we have to remember IIMC is serving 15,000 people worldwide. We're opening 100 seats in a webinar. Um, the riots that we're anticipating is a, is a genuine concern. Um, based on the online numbers, we know that it's not enough seats. However, this is a trial program and we wanna make sure that it does go well, that it is possible, that we can still keep this engaging and interactive. The bigger the numbers we get, we've all been on webinars where there's zero interaction. So we still wanna make sure that people are participating, people are engaging. So if you wanna participate, what we can do is reach out to the individual institute director that's hosting that program and see if they're willing to let you sit on potentially as a panelist or IIMC can give you access somehow to be able to view it just so you can see it. Um, it's definitely up to the individual institute directors whether we wanna open it up in that manner and we'd have to work with them individually. But I understand that there's interest in how does it work? What does it look like? So we can definitely continue the conversation. Um, one of the other questions we've had is are these going to be recorded? Um, we've given the institute directors the opportunity to record these meetings. IIMC wouldn't be using this recording for any of our own purposes or turning this into a way to monetize them in any way, shape, or form. That's not our intention. But we have given each institute director the opportunity to tell us record it or not. If we do record it, we can send that off to you and the institute directors will be able to turn that into an asset for their program. So if it's conducive to doing an on-demand webinar, you can watch it, um, you can still do an assessment and a certificate. I know some of our institutes currently have a model like that. So if that's something that or the people that are participating are interested in, we can also discuss those options too. Um, let's see, one more question before we get going. 
Um, yeah, and absolutely rest assured, um, one of the biggest concerns that came through when we started this discussion, I know this is a new program and immediately we got um, a lot of questions about competition. Now keep in mind, this is not our intention to compete with you in any way, shape or form. IMC has never wanted to create its own whole institute by itself. We've had the request from members that don't have an institute in their state or in their location. But our biggest job has always been to support you as institute directors. So we have always put your profiles up. We as the education department promote your programs left and right with everyone that we talk to. So as we go through, you're going to see the eight institute directors programs being advertised in this virtual institute. But at the same time, each individual person that we're talking to, we're still promoting what your program is doing, how you're moving forward. So the information that you gave us in the registration forms and any information that you pass on to us now, whether it be in an email format, give me a call, we're passing that on to your members too. So even though your programs are being canceled, we're still keeping everybody in the loop on how we're doing, what we're doing, and what you all are doing as well. So feel free to let me know where you're at and keep us in the loop. Copy us on your marketing material or your updates to your participants and we can share that as well. We can link it on your profile on our website. We can drop them in the regional Facebook groups if that helps too. So feel free to use us as a resource. Are there any other questions before we dive into our agenda? All right, perfect. Okay, so when we asked you to register for this program, we went ahead and came up with some questions that we wanted to address to help us get towards our colloquium um, objective today. So our objective when we looked at this was when training and travel budgets are cut, putting education on the back burner, how do we cope and how do we keep institutes vital in these uncertain times? So the questions that we asked you to fill out in your registration form were really tailored to help us get to this answer today. As I mentioned in the beginning, I don't think we're going to have a final answer or a whole plan mapped out. We're simply starting that conversation, seeing if we can collaborate together and learning from one another to figure out how we all move forward as a group or do we move forward individually. So as we go through this conversation and read this feedback, I think it's really, really important that we think bigger than COVID-19. Yes, COVID-19 is completely in our face at the moment, and that has what has stopped us dead in our tracks and even forced us to have this conversation. But realistically, any kind of disaster can do what COVID-19 has done to our institutes. It can be a man-made disaster, natural disaster, biological disaster. It can be a fire, a flood, whatever it may be, can shut our programming down. Any type of disaster is gonna force us to go back and look at how do we continue to educate our clerks, exactly where we're at today. So we asked a couple of questions that we would like you to just remind yourself of. We wanted to take a look at how each of your institutes has been impacted by COVID-19. And again, thinking bigger in the long run, um, have you taken any of your program online? And if so, what have you done? Tell us where you're at, what you're working on. When is your next program set to take place? How much time do we have to prepare for your next event? And then your hurdles. What are the biggest hurdles that you've faced or that you've overcome in planning your 2020 programs in the midst of all of the chaos that's going on? So what we did, and I sent this all to you in an email, I apologize for the two versions, um, but there was a spreadsheet that I had sent to everybody. Let me get it up here on my screen. That gave us uh, the compiled answers to all of these questions. It is color coded. So let's go ahead and go through what all these different colors mean. Um, as we go through, I want to remind you that these colors do not mean anything in terms of positive or negative. These are just our way of classifying them. So if your programs are colored a certain way, please don't think that red means bad and green means good. It's just a way for us to evaluate all this data. So in here, we took everybody who registered and if your information is missing, it simply means that we evaluated the data prior to receiving your registration. So I apologize if it feels like your, your institute and your answers were left out. 
but we took a look at green, or excuse me, um, orange boxes here are going to be your actual institute directors. All of the feedback that we got is very important from education chairs, board members, everybody. But it was really important to pay attention to the institute directors themselves. So orange highlighted here are our IDs. Uh, at the top here, column D is where we're going to start. Column D was the impact. So what we did was we worked on a red, yellow, and green model. And in this one, you're going to see green institutes are the ones that had no impact. They squeaked their program in January, February, March. No real implications happened for the 2020 program. Yellow programs are those that were kind of unsure what the impact is at that point because they're upcoming. Um, some of them will have canceled or will have had updated information for us since they filled out the registration form. But yellow are really the ones that are kind of in the danger zone. Red are ones that have given completely canceled for 2020 or are currently being rescheduled. So going back to the data, we can scroll through column D here and hopefully you have your copy in front of you. But we can take a look and you're going to see that majority of the programs listed in here are in that red zone. So when we calculated it, 65% of our participants of our responses were canceled. Um, totaling up those numbers, we got 52 responses, 34 programs canceled, six fall in that unsure, not really sure what to do yet, and four of them got their programs in and had no real impact. So very, very startling numbers when we really look at how many people were offering programs in 2020 and where we're all at now. So going back to the top, we wanted to take a look at the same model, red, yellow, and green, just looking at how have we adapted, have we transitioned online. So green ones you're going to see are completely prepared, the institute or even the association themselves has taken um, steps to move their programming online and they're already starting to offer that or have already offered that. Yellow, you're gonna see those are pending or they're researching options, maybe dabbled their toe in the water a little bit just to test it out. Red are those that haven't taken any, option, any action towards online learning whatsoever. So coming back, let's take a peek at column E here and we'll start back up at the top. And this one is also interesting to look at it from left to right. So if we look at how the Institute has been impacted, very red, have we taken it online or have we looked at it yellow? So we're looking for that forward progression when we look at all of this information. So scrolling down, you'll see there's quite a bit of yellow. You'll see quite a few where we've had red and they went into green right away, no hesitation. So these are the people that I really want to highlight today and point out. You all have their names in front of you. Um, you all have their email addresses in there too. So if we don't get to connect with this group today individually or they don't show up in your breakout room, um, definitely reach out to them or start an email exchange to get more information on how they did it and what they did. But scrolling through, we're looking for that progression from red to yellow to green. So going through the numbers down at the bottom, you see quite a few more green here, quite a few more yellow. So we have 12 that have moved some or all of their programming online. We have 17 that are taking action. They may not be finalized action yet, but participants or institute directors and associations are at least moving in that right direction. 17 of them haven't taken any steps. So these are the ones when IIMC looks at how do we work together to collaborate to move things forward. This is the information that really stuck out to us that says some of us are moving in that direction, but quite a big chunk of us are not. And keep in mind, these are only the responses received from the institutes and associations that registered for the colloquium. We have so many institutes that we didn't hear from at all. So keep that in mind when we're looking at these numbers, that they may be staggeringly different in a positive or in a negative way. The final one that we took a look at um, question wise was when is your next program date happening? When is your next program that we need to be on the lookout for? Green is going to be 2021 where there's really no immediate action needed, but we should continue to research and prepare should 2020 carry over into 2021. Yellow, you're going to see our fall programs. These are September, October, and November. 
So these ones, we really feel we need to prepare now. We're not quite sure what they're going to look like or how we're going to make these changes, but what we do now can carry over into September, October, November. And then we get into the red zone, which are the summer programs. These are the programs that are really in jeopardy of being severely impacted, canceled, just being skipped over for 2020. So looking at this, May, June, July, and August, we want you all to think about how can we continue to offer programming here in the next couple of months? Is there time to make a transition to online, knowing how quick these programs are coming up? how little resources some of us have, and how little experience some of us have with online. Or, and, is there a way that we can collaborate together to work together with one another? Perhaps those that have a lot of experience can work with those that don't. Those that have the resources, can we share? So going back to the spreadsheet, you'll see this category, um, quite a bit of red as we go through. Summer and fall programs are very, very prevalent in IINC Institute scheduling. This is where majority of our programs fall. So we go a lot of red and a lot of yellow. So only a handful of green, um, which fell into three, 2021. Only three of them are kind of out of the weeds for now, but it's an even split, 20 and 20, between summer and fall programs. So definitely something to be concerned about, definitely something to talk about today. The last question that we asked in there was, what hurdles are you facing? What's been your biggest challenge? What's been your biggest hurdle so far? So these ones, we took it away from red, yellow, and green, and we put it into blue, orange, and red. And what we did was break these down by actual concern. We tried to categorize everything into three different groups. The first group, which you're gonna see in blue, are virus fear related responses. Um, again, there is no judgment on how you responded to this question, but it just gives us a really good idea on where everybody is mentally in terms of how we're handling this, how we're coping, or are we freaking out inside? So blue responses you're gonna see are very focused on fear and overall certainty of what's gonna happen, how do we do it, could this virus come back, just a fear-driven response in general. Orange, you're gonna see they focus more on the programming aspect of it. To be, I don't know how to do this. How do I put together an online program? What kind of technology do we use? Will people use it if it's online? How do I continue to provide high quality offerings and meet the expectations of my participants? So blue responses are ones that, as a group, we can work through. The mental part of it, that fear part of it, is something that, yes, is very, very real, but it's also something that we can work through and move us into that orange. So that orange are also responses that, although they're legitimate concerns and legitimate hurdles, these are also things that we can control. These are things that we can learn to do. We can learn to put a program online. We can Google, we can reach out to other institute directors. Um, the education department is happy to do it. We are not program development experts, but we're happy to at least help you try to learn. Red are where our real concerns lied. When we sorted through this data, we said red is definitely things that are outside of our control. So travel bans, budget cuts, gathering restrictions, people need certification points, they had a certification plan to get their raise, their promotion, whatever it may be. These ones are things that are really out of our control, but our response to it is um, the only thing that we can control. So these were the ones that we really wanted to focus on. Now, Pamela Miller, our wonderful MMC Institute Academy Director in California, shared this graphic with me. Pamela, I hope you don't mind I'm sharing it shared this graphic with me during one of our, our calls a few weeks back. And it really hit home for me in terms of personally, but it also really hit home when we start to think about institutes and how we move IIMC forward. So this is a very personal model, but I want you to take a look at it. So we do have a couple of different zones. So this one really focuses on who do I wanna be through COVID-19. We can take this though through the perspective of how do I want my institute to look through COVID-19? Who is my institute? Who is my university? Where am I at as the institute director? So the responses that we looked at um, in terms of the blue responses fear-driven, 
this falls into what we look at as that fear zone. Um, obviously our institutes are not hoarding toilet paper, as you see here, oops, excuse me. We're not hoarding toilet paper in the fear zone. However, that fear of uncertainty is what's holding us in that fear zone. The next zone that we can move into is the learning zone. And this is what really fell into those orange responses that you'll see in your spreadsheet. So these responses are, I can figure this out. I'm, I'm kind of getting to terms with what's happening. This is becoming the new normal. I've kind of accepted it. Now, how do I figure out how to put my programs online? How do I do it? Then we get to the growth zone, which are those of us that have progressed working through all of that into the green online programs that you see. So I've taken my programs online. I've at least worked with my university to try to figure out how we can do this. So let's take a peek at those responses real quick before we break out into groups. So blue in category G over here are the fear-driven responses. Orange are the program concerns, how do I do it? And the red are the ones that we genuinely have to be concerned about, the ones that are gonna be outside of our control, so how do we respond to those? So scrolling through, you see a lot of blue and you see quite a bit of orange. There's a handful of red in here and those are the legit concerns that we wanna really pay attention to as we tailor our conversations. Again, there's no judgment on how you responded to these questions, but they gave us a really, really good idea on where everybody is at and how we needed to tailor the conversation today. So thank you for being very, very honest in there. Thank you for giving us as much information as you could. Um, but what I would like to do is take you into breakout groups now, have you meet, and I want you to think about these questions here. So without judgment on yourself or anybody else, where did you personally fall in here? Are we still in that fear zone? Are we still in that logistical programming zone trying to figure this out? Or have we moved beyond that and we're in that growth zone? We're moving forward, we're making things happen. Um, looking at you personally, but also looking at your institute. Where does your institute and your programming fall? Uh, what changes can you make today based on that data, based on seeing who's doing what and what resources you may have access to? Are there changes that you can implement today that's going to help you move forward into that next zone or into that next stage of institute development? And then if you're already there, what can you share that's going to help those that aren't moving forward or that aren't there or that are stuck in one of the zones prior? If these prompts don't add to your conversation today, these are not mandatory discussions you have to have. These are just information that we pulled out of your data. So if there are other things that your group wants to talk about, you are absolutely welcome to talk about whatever it is that you want when you go into your breakout group. So if you want, I can put that screen back up and you can take a picture of it if you want to work through those conversations. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and break you up into groups. You are going to get an invitation. And just as an FYI, we combined groups together, regions together. So we grouped you by region. And because of the data, we were able to see which regions lacked online programming, which regions had a significant amount of it. So we went ahead and combined these regions together. That way you can learn from one another and actually ask those questions. So there are anywhere between 10 and 12 people in these groups. So they're a little bit on the larger side for small breakout group sessions. But um, if you want more time, like we said before, we can carry these conversations into a future meeting. So I'm gonna give you about a half an hour to go ahead and talk amongst yourselves, share what's going on, share where you're at, share what you've done. And then we'll come back in about 30 minutes and come back together as a group. When you come back, um, I would like you guys to maybe assign a speaker or somebody that's going to be willing to share two or three of the biggest takeaways from each of those groups. Um, we're going to try to limit that reconnection to about a half an hour or so before we take another break. So if you just want to figure out a couple of things and designate a speaker that you feel that the group would benefit from the most, I would love to hear what everybody comes up with. But I'm gonna go ahead and open up all of the rooms and we will get everybody going. Give me one second to do so. Okay. Ashley? Yes, ma'am. 
Hi, sorry, it's Linda. I, just, I put something on chat, but I just had a question. Okay, yes, Linda, go ahead. The PowerPoint results that you gathered, yes. um, put together from the data, can uh -huh. they be shared with us? Yes, absolutely. Um, at the end, we're going to share the entire recording, and we will also share the uh, PowerPoint as well. There's well, a couple be... of other slides that we haven't gotten to or that we may not get to today, so that'll be in there as well. Will it be emailed? The power? Yeah, I will email everything to everybody. Okay. We'll send that okay. in. Okay, I, I need to share that because they voted to postpone now until next June. Uh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, yeah let that would me... help tremendously. <laughs> Yep, I'm having to send everybody's invitation into their meetings one at a time. I'm not sure why it didn't take my presets. So let me go ahead and work through that and I will send you through one at a time into your meetings. So just bear with me as I send all your invitations and you're welcome to accept them as they come. And bear with me, I'm having to remember your region numbers too. So we're moving. There we go. Okay, almost there, just a few of you left, bear with me. Valerie Fox, remind me what state, Massachusetts, right? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, Massachusetts. Gotcha, okay, here you go, on your way. Um, Jordan Todd, remind me what state? Alabama, right? Yes. Okay, perfect, here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, Elizabeth Copeland, South Carolina, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, here you go. Off you go. Uh, Jordan Todd. What state? Alabama. Alabama, here we go. All right. Um, let me find who is left. Amy. Hi, Amy Brewer. Let me find, you're off. Sabrina, what state are we in? North Carolina. North Carolina, okay, here you go, ma'am, off you go. And Terry Hudson, let me find you. Oh, you're in there. Terry, are you there? Can you hear me? Yes, Ashley, I can hear Hi. you. I've got to walk away for a few minutes. I've got okay. an issue to deal with. That's okay. Just go ahead and accept the invitation I sent you and then just turn your camera off and mute. You don't have to stay. You don't have to stay in the room if you can't. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. We'll see you in half hour. All right. Sounds good. All right. Everybody. Hopefully it was good conversation. Hopefully we got to at least share where we're all at. Um, what I would like to do though, is I would love to hear, and I'm sure the rest of the groups would love to hear kind of the biggest takeaways from your group. So hopefully we talked about designating a speaker. If not, I can just call on the individual group um, room numbers and we can see who wants to talk. So I'm going to go ahead and start with uh, the top of my list. Our first group consisted of regions 1, 9, and 10 based on who we had registered and then who had said they had online experience too. So is there anyone in there in regions 1, 9, and 10 in that group that wanted to go ahead and unmute and share? You are welcome to do that, whoever the designated speaker may have been. Or if there wasn't, you're welcome to unmute or raise your hand and we can unmute you and let us know what you want to share with the group. Anybody? 
In that group, I had Alice Atwood, I had Don, Joan Tilton, Casey Paxton, Maureen Kane, Nancy Taylor, Pamela Miller, Peggy Hawker, Shauna Friel, Sherry Pierce, Tracy Borst, and Valerie Fox. Hi, this is Casey. I nominate Pamela Means to be our spokesperson. <laughs> All right, Pamela, you've been called out. <laughs> Let's hear what happened in your group, guys. Feel free to share. Thankfully, I was taking notes. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so uh, really, do you have to highlight me, Ashley, please? Everybody wants to hear what you have to say, but I will take it down if you're uncomfortable. It's like, all of a sudden, I'm like really good. Okay, so um, we heard from uh, New England, who is uh, doing, um, because they are stretched super thin, uh, they have... Uh, um, collaborated with one of their uh, three or four year now uh, trainers and presenters to do a, a 21 session <clears throat> online on-demand courses that will be sort of a hybrid with not in person but uh, live instead of on demand they'll be um, uh, intermingled with uh, two-hour live sessions this is not to replace their institute, it's just to um, get some education out to uh, their members. And my, my team, please uh, jump in if I'm either getting this wrong or have, you have something to add. Um, so we had some very good discussion around that, that concept and um, she was very clear that this is not replacing the institute, it's just pushing out uh, education. Uh, Peggy said that uh, Peggy from Oregon said that uh, they have a September event that uh, is normally in person and they are working to take it all uh, online, uh, live experiences online. Uh, and then uh, California, um, uh, the, the one of the institutes was canceled in June. Oh, I'm sorry. My home phone never rings, but of course it just did. Um, <laughs> Uh, and uh, Maureen is thinking about uh, what to do for September, as am I. I'm going to be going online and um, have uh, uh, developed some very stringent requirements uh, for people participating online. And then uh, British Columbia was sharing with us that um, they are also looking at uh, transitioning to online and They've actually uh, created a, a, a set of criteria for determining um, is, because we were discussing content and some of the content is conveyable to online and some is not. So they have actually created some criteria to determine what is transferable and what is not. So um, uh, I'm looking forward to Nancy sharing that uh, with, with us as well. So with that, I'm happy to uh, turn it back to my group if there's something that they want to add to that or correct something that I didn't convey properly. Thank you, Pamela. Is there anybody else from that group that wanted to share anything else that was a good, pretty good takeaway that the group could benefit from at this point? Um, Ashley, yes, this Marie. is Marie. Mm -hmm. um, I think the one thing that that I brought up that uh, did, did resonate is um, we might be looking for some best practices on training people who have been traditional trainers and now are going online so that um, we can prepare them um, to deliver the material online. Yeah, very, very good point. It's definitely a transition tr teaching from in person um, and taking that online. We had that conversation with our Athenian facilitator or our Athenian dialogues being transitioned online, that there's a way to do those in person that are very interactive, personal exercises, small group activities. And we even have institute directors that make you put together, or excuse me, Athenian facilitators that put together puzzles or actual physical games you play, things you build. So transitioning to online is very, very different. Um, definitely something to think about. And I wrote that down as something that we can continue to explore and flesh out and see if anybody in the room has any experience doing that. Is there anything else that anybody wants to share from regions one, nine, and 10? 
This is Joan, and I believe um, Pamela and Maureen did a great job, and I appreciate um, Tracy and uh, Nancy's input. It was very helpful. So I, I believe Pamela and then Maureen's addition really covered everything we talked about. So thank you. Perfect. Thank you, Joan. Okay. Part of the reason that we had groups mixed up, not just one region, I think region eight is the only one that was large enough and had enough of a good mix, um, is that we wanted you to learn not only from each other, obviously, but from those that were doing things different than what you were doing. So hopefully you found that valuable. Um, Pamela, go ahead. I'm sorry, I did forget one thing. This is important. Um, so CCAC, the State Association, um, they had to cancel their conference, but um, they had several conference presenters that then approached them and said, hey, we've now transitioned what we were going to do in person online. Do you want us to deliver that way? So they have actually, CCAC has actually already done several um, online sessions uh, with these um, presenters, and they've been in four-hour blocks, and the feedback has been very, very good. So um, Sh uh, Shauna Friels uh, would be somebody you would want to contact if you want to figure uh, find out how that how they did that and how it worked. Yeah, thank you, Pamela. Um, the education department does review all of the course reviews for the online programs that are happening now. So it was very very exciting to see that start to come through right away. A lot of states adapted. A lot of people stepped up and adapted right away. Um, others we haven't heard from so far. So if today inspires you to go ahead and step up and start to put some stuff out um, or has just given you ideas on how you can actually do it, feel free to reach out to the individuals or use us as a resource as the department and we can make those connections for you and hook you up with the people that we know are, are working with certain things. Um, let's move on to uh, region two and three and Jason Camp, I apologize, I dropped you in the wrong region. So hopefully um, you found that conversation still valuable, but uh, region two and three, anybody want to unmute and let me know. I know I had a nomination for Camilla Pittman to be the spokesperson in the chat box. <laughs> so Camilla, if you're comfortable, go for it. Uh, anybody who knows me knows I sit here and write notes. Um, we were glad to have Jason in there. We were, uh, I didn't ask questions about Mississippi being there with us and uh, he provided some really good input. Uh, quick, um, both Jason and then Pamela commented on having uh, the ability to want to video but having problems with the speakers. Some of them either lived out in a place where they couldn't do the videoing or they didn't have the equipment to do so. So that was a question that was raised. Um, there, um, they shared with us some of what they were doing about pushing out some webinars. And uh, Jason asked about a swivel program in case anybody has information on that. Uh, that is helping to record live because if we do these live programs, uh, of course, we want them to be good quality. People are paying to take the classes. Um, George, uh, Georgia Claire commented on beginning process of online as well. Uh, Amy said in Florida they, they were struggling a little bit of getting uh, the engagement online versus being in person, so they were struggling a little bit with that. Stephen uh, shared with us about the school being closed down and the problem in getting some of their speakers, which they're used to getting through state uh, presenters uh, and information there from the school. Um, so those were some comments. Uh, Municipal Association in South Carolina is thinking about it. We've been doing some little short snippets on COVID and I think they've been working out fairly well. So I strongly encourage Municipal Association to do it. Uh, in, in a summary, this is not new. I know when I was working on my CMC and my MMC, I took online classes. I think it's new to us to implement and work with that. So it's not a program that we're, we're not used to participating in. This is growth for us and we're going to that next level. So with that said, I think most everyone was saying, we believe we're in the growth zone, that we're willing to step out and take that, um, those extra steps. Uh, online video is good. It's working with the speakers and the facilitators. And I shared with them that yes, we have to adjust some as well in making those presentations online. There was interest in uh, what type of uh, assessment or ideas to action form? What do we give them to make it a little bit more uh, implemented in their participation? 
for them to complete once they have finished the session. Um, getting approvals for those sessions. Actually, that was one question. When we um, we're usually getting approval for sessions, but if we have already uh, have assigned sessions that you've approved, if we're going online with them, do we need to get approval for those as well? Do we, we need to ask? Yeah, we would ask for a heads up. That way, uh, if people are asking, you know, this session was it was planned, it was already pre-approved, what's happening? We can just say, oh, it's transitioned to an online format. It also helps us when we look at applications and we're talking to members on the phone and somebody says, you know, I took this session online and we go, wait, we don't have a certificate that says online. It just helps us all stay in the loop. You don't need to seek the whole pre-approval process, but if you could tell us what platform you're using, um, if there's a change in date or a change in time, things like that, we can at least update our historical records. That way, should we need to go back and pull that information later or share it, we have it. Thank you. That answers that question. And another question that came up, uh, we discussed just shortly is registration. And my two cents was, we want to be economical. I'm paying for my deputy clerk to get her certifications right now and taking classes. Of course, we love all the freebies. And we'll jump on those. Uh, but remember too, that the individuals signing up for these classes are earning their points. So make it economical. Uh, but realize too, you have cost up front you have to handle as well. Uh, so just keep that in mind when you're looking at the registration. Um, and there were some talks about increasing if, if it was online, reducing it if you come in person. So, um, you know, some questions and thoughts there. The last comment I wanna leave came from Claire in Georgia and this was her quote, it's a goal and now there's an opportunity to make it happen. So we feel like we're in the growth zone. Thank you, Camilla. Anybody else in that region two, region three plus Mississippi <laughs> didn't want to speak or anything else that we wanted to share? Okay, so let's go ahead and go on then to um, region four and region seven. We combined you guys. So if there's anybody in there or if we nominated a speaker, go ahead and unmute yourself and let us know what's going on in regions four and region seven. Okay, they did nominate someone, so here I am. There you are. <laughs> One of the first things that we talked about is a couple of us, our events are still coming up. We haven't had to cancel. So we were talking about the difficulty we're having in working with the hotels on are we like in the state of Illinois, we're still closed down, but the state of Texas has already started to reopening. And in fact, they are having a face-to-face -face event in June for several reasons. They pulled their clerks and that's what they want, but their hotel also would not let them out because the state is reopening. Whereas we're hoping at this point, we're hoping we'll be reopened by October, but we don't know that we'll be able to have a group of 180 or 200 people. So we're having difficulty with hotels getting back to us and letting us know what can happen so that we can plan on the future. So a couple other things that we talked about is all of us are talking about trying to get at least some of our program online. So we talked about the various uh, platforms. Lindsay in Oklahoma is fortunate that her university has a platform that she's able to do. So she says a lot of her speakers will record their stuff in Zoom and then they upload it into the program that her university has, which is Canvas. And I know here at Illinois, I'm fortunate enough that my university has a platform that I'm able to use and I can get my non-credit type programming on it to make it available to the clerks. So then that caused us to talk a little bit about um, what we felt like was most important for our clerks. And we had two clerks in our room. We had Lana and Kitty, and they both believe that the networking is the most important part. So if we move our program online, how do we ensure that we get the networking uh, opportunities for the clerks? And I asked them in the room that we were in, do you feel like you're having a networking opportunity? And we had one who had video and one who did not. And then that right there showed that they didn't feel like they did because they really couldn't see each other and they really couldn't interact with each other. So that was brought us to talking more about going with a hybrid type program, maybe doing two or three days in a face-to-face, -face, setting up those hours and then making some online programs available that they can then fill in the rest of their hours with. But as Amy mentioned, um, one of the things that they did is polled their clerks on what they would like. And I think I'm going to think about doing that here in the state of Illinois and just get an idea of what they would like to see us do. 
We also talked a little bit about marketing, who would you market to? And we all kind of agreed that we would stay pretty much with our clerks who we're working with now within the state. And hopefully we could get clerks who currently cannot participate because of financial reasons that they would be able to uh, participate in an online format because they wouldn't have to leave their offices in the one-to-one -one offices or if they don't have the funds available. We also discussed what would we do about cost because though for our clerks, the online would be less expensive because they won't have a hotel and they won't have to pay for their dinners, that we still felt that we would charge pretty much the same thing we charge now, because even though we may not be paying for food for them, we're going to be paying the additional expenses related to the technology. So that's kind of how we, where we wrapped up and what we were talking about. Thank you, Peggy. Is there anybody else in that group? that wanted to chime in and wanted to share anything that Peggy may have overlooked. No? Okay, um, regions five and six were a combo region. So who is our designated nominated speaker in five and six? Cassie, I'm seeing that in the chat box. <laughs> She's looking at us like we're crazy. <laughs> Kathy, you up for it? For me, I would be more interested to see what they took away. They were asking me a lot of questions and, and it would be interesting if I told them anything that was valuable because I ended up doing most of the talking. So I'd really rather not say what I said. I'd rather them feedback was anything worth it. They I kept think asking that's questions. That's a really valid point, though. I mean, Cassie, like we said in the beginning, you guys, she's taken her entire 2020 program online for the for July. So definitely we want to hear from Cassie, but I think it would be really interesting to hear what other people heard while she was speaking. Um, what actually came through? Cassie knows that program inside and out. So did that come across in a way that was helpful? So is there anybody else in that region that's willing to speak up and, and talk about what she's doing or what we took away? I would just want to add that um, as somebody who does presentations, Cassie made it very um, clear that they spent time training their presenters so that they could do their best job presenting to others. I think that's really important because you keep hearing about the engagement with the attendees and not having the face to face. And then if you go in and you have kind of an epic technology failure, it's not going to help the institutes at all and she was very proactive in how she and the university are dealing with that and handling that and that was kind of nice to hear knowing that we're sending people in and it is going to be you know a you know grade a class one institute Absolutely agreed. Um, I know there's a lot of time that's gone into that program in particular, but all of the programs that you are developing, regardless of whether you're association level or institute level, um, firsthand experience, I know how much goes into it. I know. And it's, it's not easy. Um, I know a lot of times transitioning to online or starting to offer it can seem like an easy way out or just an easy way to throw something out there. The transition, I, I can tell you, from my own experience, I'd rather plan three IIMC conferences with 60 sessions each than one online institute that we're trying to do now. Just the learning curve behind it and the amount of detail behind it is so much more intense than uh, an in-person training. So don't let that intimidate you, but definitely let that set realistic expectations that this is not easy, this is hard for all parties involved, the learners, the trainers, the coordinators, and the more grace we can give one another, um, the more understanding and support we can give one another on all of those levels from participant to coordinator, the better off that program is going to be, the more valuable it's going to be for all those participants. Um, is there anything else from that particular region before we move on? I would add that one of the I things Cassie ta talked about was holding was ways of connection, because someone mentioned that, that she's still gonna hold virtual lunches and a breakfast. They're gonna be connecting still a newbie with a mentor and having them connect over lunch one day. So I think that intentionality is gonna go a long way to helping people feel like they get the networking that that is what most people really enjoy about the conference. And I think too, she's looking at 
it seemed to me really evaluating who your speakers are and who will do well live and who can be just taken fully online and do that really well. So not just trying to maybe fit all your speakers into one type of model, but analyzing what the topic is and who the speakers are and how they can best get the material out. Thank you, Hona. That's a fantastic point. Um, we have a couple of IIMC online classes up on our website that are sessions modeled after conference sessions that we've put on. And I can tell you there are so many speakers that do fantastic in person and they're so dynamic. They're so engaging. They cannot teach online if their life depended on it. They just don't transition over. So I love the fact that um, Nancy Taylor in British Columbia Region 10 has an idea or criteria for what is actually transferable online, but even broader than that, who is transferable online may not transfer across both platforms. So Hona, thank you for bringing that up. Um, definitely a huge takeaway, but I also love the idea of hosting a breakfast and a lunch, eat on your own, but eat together. So if we can get creative in ways like that, you guys, that we, we know the clerks love to network. We know that's what they love about coming to the in-person opportunities. And if all of it takes is us turning on the camera for them so they can eat together, that's a way to bridge that gap. That's something that doesn't cost us extra money, doesn't cost us anything but extra time and a little bit extra work, but it shows that we're taking that next step. So thank you for pointing that out, Hona. That's a great way to bring a little bit more of that networking and engagement, that personal interaction into your programs. Um, anything else before we hit Region 8? This is Jennifer Janice. Um, We had kind of a variety of folks in different situations in our group, but I and everyone provided some helpful comments, but I did want to um, particularly thank Cassie because I know she was on the receiving end of quite a lot of questions. And I think that was just because, you know, right now she is has been the model um, of kind of quickly um, adapting and, and fully implementing everything that you possibly could online. So we did get some very valuable ideas from her and just wanted to add that. Perfect. Thank you, Jennifer. Appreciate the feedback. Um, let's hear from Region 8. And then uh, we'll, we'll talk about where we're at time-wise and what we want to do moving forward. So who's our spokesperson for Region 8? Do we have anybody? I can go. There Except. we go. Hi. Hi, Ashley. Go for Hi. it. So we had five of us. We had Nebraska, Arizona, Montana, Nevada, and us. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, and Wyoming. I didn't say that. So we kind of talked about where we're at, which is pretty much everybody's canceled for the short term. There's one that might get to happen in the fall, um, trying to transition to online. Our biggest worry right now is making sure that the clerks get to maintain their, or stay on course for their, their CMC or their MMC certification so that we're offering enough in the next 12, 18 months that they don't get thrown off and looking at if there's any timelines they need to be tracking with either locally or nationally. Um, we had a lot of talk about kind of this growth mindset that we want to keep growing, we want the clerks to keep growing um, and, and keep up with their education, whether it's through us or not. We prefer it be local, but that may not be the only option for the near term. And that in the long run, this is probably going to make us stronger, right? Because it's going to diversify our offerings as a program, as an institute. So we're never going to be fully online and we accept that and are okay with that because our clerks want that in person time. In Montana, what we did was went through and said, these courses that were listed for Institute are more knowledge transfer type courses, things that the, the knowledge can be shared online. Those lend themselves well to a virtual format. The courses that are more interpersonal, interactive, leadership type based courses, those need to be saved for when we, when we can meet in person again. Um, and the other thing is for Montana, we, we have set up a webinar series. So we have 12 webinars scheduled right now. It's every other week. So twice a month from now through the end of September. And we've sold it to our, our clerks kind of as a bundle deal. So they pay one fee for all of them. And they can, they're one to two hours each typically. And then we have a learning management system through eExtension that they can go in, they can watch the video. If they didn't watch it live, they can see the handouts, they can 
take their quiz and we can track all of that and then we'll just give them one institute type certificate at the end of the year like we would if they were in person. So hopefully that'll work out. We've also, if anybody has any questions about this, had some online programming in the last several years, some synchronous, some asynchronous type courses. So um, yeah, if you have questions, just give me a call or shoot me an email. Thank you, Ashley. Um, and Montana, you guys, this is a great opportunity. Ashley and Dan Clark, they have been doing online. They do an intro session for brand new Montana clerks as part of their Beginner Institute. Um, and it's fantastic. But there is a IIMC Facebook group for institute directors. And Ashley dropped in information in there. It's been a, it's been a couple months now, right, Ashley, I think? I think so. Um, it's been a couple months now. But she did drop some information in there on the platform they use, how it all works. Uh, and if you're not part of that Facebook group, it is reserved for institute directors only, but it's a great place for you to connect and idea exchange. So right now, being where we're at, um, the, the need for that information sharing is greater than ever. So this colloquium is fantastic, but if we're not coordinating, if it's not put on, we still want you to communicate behind the scenes doing um, everything that you can to support one another. So if you're not part of that group or you're not active in that group, we really encourage you to pop on there. Karen will approve your request um, based on the name that you use when you, when you sign in with the Facebook account and get in there and share what it is you're doing. Um, we will take, after this meeting, I will have a recap put together with the recording with the slides that we can share. Um, you're welcome to use or disseminate those how you see fit. But um, also in there, I would love to continue the conversation about who is doing what and where can we share these resources. So perhaps the Facebook group is a great place to share that. If somebody like Nancy Taylor from British Columbia has information about her criteria that she's put on, um, you're welcome to send that over and I would love to put that in a resource area of some kind. We may need to flush out the right place, but I know Facebook groups allow us to upload files. Um, now, not all of us do social media though. That's something that we definitely need to be cognizant of and be aware of. So we as a department can go back and figure out if there's a better way for us to collaborate or create a place where you can drop resources in and share if you're comfortable with that. So what we can do um, is to continue the conversation for sure. Um, I think Region 8, I'm sorry, I should have asked if we had any other speakers. I apologize for that. Let me do that before we go on. Is there anybody quick, else? Um, I just wanted to add on, I forgot to mention as well, with the mentorship kind of theme, Sarah out of Wyoming had a great kind of model with their mentors and mentees. And we talked about, and maybe we should chat a little bit more later about, it, can we offer the mentors that, that volunteer to do that experience points so they can keep earning education or, and or experience points depending on what side they're on and kind of help facilitate and incentivize some kind of mentorship program since we're not actually meeting in person. So, okay. That's perfect. Thank you for throwing that back out there. Um, Can I just say, oh, go ahead, Linda. Oh, sorry. I just want to say one thing too that, that we all talked about is um, we are, I think we're all moving in the direction of growth, but some people don't want to um, change that quickly. So there's baby steps in bringing individuals on board, I think. Um, so some of like the spreadsheets where they're in the red, they've changed, you know, the color coding at, at what everybody's doing. But when there's limitations with your resources, there's limitations with funding and the unknowns, sometimes we have to be very careful um, to offer what we, what we can and where people are at that point. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Um, change isn't always just up to us as the institute director, as the ed chair, whatever it may be. We're not always the one that can just make that decision. And we as staff run into that as well, um, where we have an idea of something that we want to do. And there's committees that have to get on board. There's the board that has to get on board. So even if you're ready to change, but those that you take direction from or that fund your budget or whatnot, it, it is a slow process. It's not something that we're going to be able to make those changes overnight, whether it be the mental changes that get you through to that next zone or the physical changes that actually need to happen in your programming. So don't be, don't be disappointed. Don't feel like you're behind. Things don't happen overnight, but know that although we've been thrown into this at lightning speed, 
doesn't mean that we need to react with lightning speed. We still want to be smart. We still want to be very conscious of the people that we're servicing. Not all of our members are going to do online learning. As an education department, we can tell you firsthand that there are people that refuse to do an online class, and that's 100% okay. All the different learning styles aren't conducive to learning online. So definitely something we all want to take into consideration. Is there anything else um, from any of the regions or anything else that may have been triggered by a conversation that we should all bring together as a group before we start to talk about next steps? Okay, um, let's, let me take a peek in the chat. I know we had some options in terms of, um, Linda from Arizona suggested that as a resource center, we can use something like Dropbox or OneDrive, even Google Drives. Um, the education department uses a program called Airtable for a lot, a lot of stuff. This is how we coordinate our conference. This is how we're coordinating the virtual institute. So we can help set up something like that too and give everybody access to it or a shared sheet where you can all drop resources in. They can be downloaded, they can be shared. So we can definitely continue the conversation to work to find a collaborative space where we can share resources and ideas. Um, Kim from Ayers, Arkansas says, another organization she's part of is hosting weekly Zoom conversations. Come as you are and talk about what you want. You can send questions in ahead of time or just bring them up. Um, these, are, these are fantastic. And this may be something, if that's of interest to you as a group, as institute directors, I am happy to coordinate that for you. We can use our IIMC account to set that up. We have the upgraded account where there's no restrictions, so it doesn't cost anything on your end. Um, definitely want to continue that collaboration and idea exchange. Let's learn from one another what we've done, what we can do. For the sake of time, um, we have about 20 minutes left in this group and I want to give you the option. I know three hours is tough to knock out as much as we want. Um, I have like three other slides and three other questions I want to ask you guys that we're just not going to get to today. So what I'd like to ask is what we want to do for the next 20 minutes or so. I can send you back into your breakout rooms or we can sit here and continue to talk as a group. If you feel it's beneficial for everybody to hear what everybody has to say, we can do a free for all and just raise your hand um, and we'll get you unmuted and get you to chat. Why don't you drop in the chat box what your preference would be? Just write breakout rooms or write um, group chat. Let me know what you guys would like to do for the next 20 minutes or so before we end. I see a couple stay in the group, stay in the big group. Group, 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 small group, one. Okay, give me a couple more and let's gauge it. Okay. Okay, so it sounds like the general consensus is to let's stay here. So questions so far have been focused on who, can we share the resources? It's so, it's incredible to hear what you guys are doing, how you're doing it. Like Cassie with the breakfast and the lunch. We, I mean, those are things that we take for granted at the conference that we don't really think about putting together when we're, when we're online. So does anybody else have anything in their institute, in their association, any creative ideas like that, that somebody could immediately take today and start implementing in their program? Even if there's no online courses, what is something that we can take, such as put together a Zoom breakfast, a Zoom lunch, a come as you are, talk about what you want kind of chat? What other ideas are out there? If you wanna physically raise your hand or digitally use the little raise hand button, um, Karen and myself will be watching to see if anybody wants to pop in there. Anybody? Um, Cassie, let's hear from you. Go ahead and unmute. Okay, sorry, I had troubles getting the mouse to work. Something that we're going to do this year, and we tried it last year and it worked really well, is we're going to be doing a wine, W-I-N-E, and rewind. And what that is, it's a question and an answer um, session. And we started at, the, at the, um, the middle of the week, but because so often we are teaching so much to these people, 
and they don't get their questions answered, they're overwhelmed, and this is a time that they can ask questions. We have them send it um, IM to us, or they can ask it over Zoom. Great, right, very interesting. There's a lot of ways that you guys can create engagement and networking opportunities um, without ever stepping foot in a actual classroom or a virtual classroom, but just ways to get questions answered, just ways to get idea exchanges going. Um, I know Ellen in Nebraska has also offered a jumpstart session for the, the brand new clerks and she invited Kelly and myself to come in and talk about um, just what IIMC is, what certification options we offer, kind of how to go through the CMC process too. So if you want to make a small transition into something like that, we're happy to act as a resource for you too. We can come on camera, organize a Zoom meeting for you if you don't want to do it yourself um, or you need assistance. But we're happy to go ahead and, and give you a little intro, give your members something in terms of content online or a first experience. So Ellen, if you want to say anything about it, you're welcome to. Otherwise, we can go to whoever else has questions. I can let Tammy do that because she's the clerk and she's the one who helped us get it set up. Um, so I'll let her talk about it. And then if I have anything else, I'll come back. Perfect. Thank you. Go ahead, Tammy. Um, our Jumpstart program is for the new clerks in Nebraska. We had um, about 35 new clerks from the previous time we had our conference. We had 19 clerks on the session. Um, it went very well. Um, Ashley and Kelly did a great job explaining how IIMC is a big part of what we do and explain the CMC process. Um, we put together a huge packet and it's just a quick overview of everything they need to know, like their first year deadlines, um, retention, Open Meetings Act, um, everything that they need to do, need to know for their, to do their job good, um, we hope. Um, and we still get questions um, from the clerks. We have a big group, um, clerk email list that clerks just send out random questions to and anybody can answer. Um, but the Jumpstart program usually every year is a very good session, very well attended. Um, hopefully it doesn't leave them more confused than what they started, but um, we're there to help them and it's very well received. Thank you, Tammy. The only thing that I would add is that we do it so that we have a village clerk a second city clerk and a first city clerk sit, um, be part of the panel that gives the discussion because each area needs a specific piece of information. And so it allows clerks to get that information from people do it, that have been in the business for a long time. And so we have a clerk that's been with us for 40 years. And then I think the shortest clerk had been is with us is like 13 years or eight years something like that but anyway but each one gets to talk they get to um give really good information and it allows the these new clerks to feel a part of it and um i did a brief um evaluation and the evaluations are coming back really positive from that event Thank you, Ellen. Um, there's one one that we haven't heard from yet that I think would be really, really good to share. Let me see if she's still on. Morgan Barnes, are you still on at all? She may have signed off. Kansas, I think she signed off. Um, Morgan, I hope she doesn't mind me kind of throwing her under the bus here, but um, Morgan has been running a Zoom meeting series. So Kansas has taken things for the association and has put those up into two hour Zoom meetings. Um, I believe she did, she's doing them every week, I believe is what it is. Um, we had a brief email exchange about it, but I would love for her to send us a little bit more info too when you watch this replay, Morgan, if you could give us more information or send it to me and I can pass it on about specifically what you did and how you did it. Um, 
Let me see. I have a question from Jason in here. If any other directors are affiliated with a state extension service, please let me know. I have Ashley Kent and any others. So if any of you are involved in a state extension service, go ahead and drop that in the chat. At least put your name, um, maybe your email address. I know the spreadsheet I sent everybody had email addresses. But yeah, if there's people that are in similar situations as you structure wise, let's go ahead and connect and see what resources we may have that could be shared or translated over. And um, thank you for that. Um, Peggy is curious about what are thoughts about how long an online session or program should be two hours or longer. Is there anybody that wants to weigh in or that at least shares that same concern that they're they're curious about. I'll, I'll um, jump in a little bit from, sure. so we've done a couple things in extended studies, which is where I'm at, is we've actually had some instructors do a full day, six hour training, break it up into kind of three hour components with some breaks in it. Um, I know we're getting okay reviews from that, but a lot of people saying that's too long and, and it's very difficult to remain focused. So we've kind of gone to with the assistance of each one of our instructors the philosophy of a two hour or a three hour session um, three hours is the max that we're looking at um, and that would include a break and some breakout sessions so that it's not just sitting in front and and just sitting there and trying to listen to one person lecture to you the whole time but um, we've kind of looked at that philosophy as your your optimum is a two hour session for adult learning and all of that, which many of you guys already know, but really truly for your instructors and for their ability to retain the content that two hours is your optimum training, which provides for a lot of challenges as well. Because then you have to spread it over three or four days if you're doing a six or an eight hour session. Thank you for sharing that, Sherry, I appreciate it. Um, Maureen Kane, I know had her hand up. So go ahead, Maureen, chime in. I, I did have a kind of a question for the whole group. Um, we're all talking about offering variations and, and choosing different courses that are appropriate. Has anyone done a definitive thing on whether they feel like they are obligated to offer all of the hours, institute hours, that they traditionally offer? Or are they considering offering 50% because we're doing some extraordinary changes? Uh, I'm trying to come to grips with how many hours I have to tackle in order to, you know, really feel like I've made, fulfill my commitment this year. Is there anybody that wants to weigh in? Um, let's see, I see Tracy Borst's hand went up. Go ahead, Tracy. So we, we canceled our institute, um, which was in July, and we're putting out some courses later this summer that will be online, but we're not anticipating that that is institute hours, it's training hours, it's um, IMC points, but, um, we're not replacing the, the whole thing. We're just getting some education out there. Thank you, Tracy. Anybody else have an answer to that question? Um, Kim Jones, Arkansas. Go ahead, Kim. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, I just personally do feel an obligation to make sure that clerks in Arkansas have, like I'm providing somehow um, as many hours as they would have gotten out of institute anyway. Um, so for me, the uh, work that Ashley and everyone has done to do those hours that are available, uh, personally, I'm kind of counting that as <laughs> you guys, I keep telling you about them. So there's a chance for you to get that many hours anyway. Um, but I am trying really hard to figure out a way to replace the hours that we would have done in our one day workshops plus the five day institute. So I don't know if I'll make that goal or not, but that's, that's what we're trying for. Thank you, Kim. I think a lot of us feel that obligation that our participants were counting on us to offer X amount of hours or played into their certification plan. 
and transitioning an entire 40 hour institute into an online platform is, is very, very challenging. I think there's very few of us on the phone here today. I think we all know who may be able to do it, but there's very few of us that would be one willing to take on a challenge that huge if we don't have any experience in it. But two, that do we want to put 40 hours of content online? That's a whole nother conversation to have too. So this, this pandemic, this transition that we're making is definitely taking the way we normally deliver these institutes and making it, making us think in different, different ways. So like, I can't remember who said it on here, but we're transitioning in the way we do things. And again, we're not just talking about COVID-19. We're talking big picture here. Should your buildings burn down? Should your state light on fire? Should something happen? How do we prepare for things like that to happen? How do we prepare to be able to continue moving forward with the knowledge that we have now and the experience that we have now? Is there any other comments or anybody else have, want to- I did have one more follow-up question. Yeah, go ahead. go ahead, Maureen. I, it would be really helpful for me. I don't know that we've ever done it. If you could have sort of a list or people could provide you the information on how many institute hours they offer annually. You know, I mean, I hear different people talk about they have a spring institute, a fall institute. They have a, you know, they have a once a year institute. I'd, I'd really like to have some sense for what institute do annually across across the organization so that yeah, I understand where I fit in because I do 90 hours a year which is an enormous amount of classroom education yeah we can definitely work to get all that information out to everyone um, when we send out your annual report reviews at the end of the year we always ask you to look at your profile your institute profile that's up on our website a lot of our institute directors give us the information they would like to see advertised up there so on there you'll see some of the institutes offer 40 hours some of them are a 120 hour cycle over a three-year period so some of that information is already up on our website maureen um, others of it, we get it in the annual reports, but we don't share the annual reports out for privacy purposes with everybody. So if you want to send us, institute directors, if you want to email me your program schedule, how many hours you offer, one, we can put that up on your profile on our website, which everybody will have access to, members, institute directors, which is great for advertising your program too, so people can map out how long it's going to take them to get certified. Um, but for two, if there's another way we can get it out to everybody, we can include it in that new resource center that we're going to try to develop to put together a place where you can drop your ideas and information. So great content. Um, I don't, I think the only other state that might offer as much programming as you do is North Carolina. And unfortunately, Trey Allen, their institute director, isn't on the call with us, but they offer 120 hours in a 10 month period. So they go every couple of months, they run an institute and they cover that entire 120 hours in 10 months. So beyond that, they also offer academies, regional academies. They offer um, all kinds of various regional trainings in addition to that 120 hours. So I don't know, I know they're taking a lot of their stuff online and I wish Trey was here to join us today, but maybe when he watches the replay, um, he'll be able to chime in and send us some information on one, how the heck they deliver that much content, but two, what are they doing with all of that content now and how is it transitioning? Um, I think we got time for maybe one more comment, but being respectful of everybody's time, it is almost 12 o'clock here, California time. So if there's any other comments, otherwise we can talk about what our next steps are going to be from here and how we wanna move forward. Is there anybody else that wants to chime in? Okay. Oh, go ahead, Camilla. Um, this is just from somebody from the outside for the Institute Directors, but uh, I'm always one to say, let's not have to reinvent the wheel. So I think it'd be a great way to find out from all the Institute Directors what kind of training they have, and some may be able to benefit from that training uh, so that you're working together and networking together to see what we can do uh, to help some of our other states that might need more assistance. Uh, want to encourage that so that someone's not having to start from scratch and uh, 
I know our institute directors work together and network together. So just continue doing that. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely, Camilla. And we echo that as the education department is, and as IIMC. Um, I'm going to share my screen with you guys and just show you the parts of the program that we didn't get to today. Um, what I would like to do, though, is really discuss the opportunity to have another meeting like this so we can continue the conversation. So what we'd originally intended for everybody to start working on together after were these questions. This was the other half of the agenda. Um, part of our, our thoughts here is, is it a possibility, is it a responsibility of us as institute directors, as a group, as all these different arms that make up IIMC and this triangular partnership, is it a collaborative responsibility to continue to educate our clerks? Or is this individual responsibility on each individual institute director, state, country, province, whatever you want to refer to? So our, our thought was to wrap up, and unfortunately we just ran out of time, but we can take these questions here and carry the ideas that everybody's had, the ideas everybody shared, and the thoughts that we can all take home and digest now. We can carry this kind of stuff into a future conversation. So we really want to know, is there a way that we can collaborate all together? Is there a way that we can collaborate without encroaching on one another's territory or being seen as competitive? Um, is there a way we can collaborate at all in general? Or are we just sharing ideas and it's the individual responsibility to go back to their institutes and do what they will with it? Um, again, what other ideas have we taken away today for any kind of disaster preparedness? And, and then contingency plans. Some of us are very, very varied in terms of our jobs are dependent upon this institute. Some of our institute directors have a job, other things going on at the universities, and the institutes don't really affect um, that job security or that income that's coming in for the program. So there's a lot of different things, and it's much, much bigger than just can we collaborate, but how do we do it? And our final uh, question to you as a group would be, can IIMC help in any way? What can we do to, one, support what you do individually, support what you do as a whole, but can we continue to help you support our members, the members that we share together and the members that we may not share together? So what I would like to do is take the last few minutes, um, and if you want to drop it in the chat or we can unmute, is anybody open to continuing this conversation and carrying it forward, maybe another part two of the colloquium in a couple of weeks, just to reconnect and continue to move this conversation forward? You're welcome to drop it in a chat or raise your hand, and we can share it amongst the group if anybody has any thoughts. I'm seeing some yeses, part two, okay. Okay, yeah, personally, I think it's a great idea. There's been so much information shared today in such a little bit amount of time. And now that we kind of have some introductions and things like that out of the way and the foundation laid, we can definitely dive right into part two and really spend more time getting into the weeds, into the nitty gritty and figure out how do I make this work for my institute? How do we make this work together as a group? So why don't um, part two plus weekly chat times, common material, drop spot, yeah. Why don't uh, our education department, why don't we go back as IIMC and see what we can come up with in terms of um, a resource for you where we can act as that hub and at least help you get something coordinated or something put together. If there are ideas, I know I saw um, OneDrive, I saw Dropbox in the chat. Um, we use Airtable on our end. If there's other resources that you know that would be a great resource center for the Institute directors outside of that Facebook group, then definitely send me an email and let me know what your resources are, what your ideas are, and we can share that and we can start collaborate. Um, how soon do we want to do this? I know we're all kind of on this momentum and we're, we're getting going now that we have all these ideas and juices flowing. Does two weeks, three weeks sound okay to try to schedule another meeting or is that too soon, not soon enough? Give me a little bit of an idea. Drop it in the chat on what you're thinking. My instinct, my first instinct is two weeks. 
I'm seeing a couple more two weeks in there. Okay, so let's plan on two weeks from now. Let me pull up a calendar here. Let's plan on two weeks from now. So that would take us into the first week of June, June 5th. Let me poke around at IIMC schedule just to make sure that there's nothing else scheduled there. And we'll go ahead and set up a, um, a Zoom meeting just like this one and we can do the registration process again. If there's questions that you guys feel that we wanna gather data before during that registration process, similar to what we did in the beginning, that helps us go through a little bit of that info and be able to pass it on to you before just to make the conversation flow a little bit better and get all that stuff out of the way in the beginning. So why don't we go ahead and do that? We will sign off and start to put all that stuff into play and reach out to everybody with one, a recap of today's conversation, the link. I'll also share the slides that we had for the PowerPoint. We didn't get to see them all, but we'll go ahead and show those as well. Feel free to share those, explore, do whatever you need to do with those. Um, I see a question in here. Let's collect the number of hours of training, things like that. So if you have questions, suggestions, definitely send me an email on the side and we can start to build those questions in. And when you register, all we ask is that you really try to make an effort to answer those questions. I know it's time consuming and those boxes aren't huge. So give us as much information as we can. Don't just breeze through that registration form. We're going to read through every one of those and bring that to everybody. So do the best you can fill in that out. Um, is there anything else for the good of the order before we sign off? I know I want to send out another congratulations to Cassie Van Remortel. Thank you for all of your ideas today, your information, and congratulations once more. But is there anything else today, you guys, before we start running on our end to be able to make all of this work for you? Um, I know Kelly has something she'd like to say, so Kelly, go ahead. Hi, guys. Am I, can you hear me okay? Yep, you're good. Good. I just wanted to say it's nice being on this call. Typically when we're at conference and we have a colloquium, Ashley and I are usually running around the halls and helping out with the education session. So it was really good to sit here and hear, know that all of our institutes are in one way or another trying and making an attempt. It's nice to, it's nice hear, to hear the data for the hours that we're going to see all of that because I'll be completely open and honest with all of you. I deal with certification applications. That's my main role at headquarters. And a lot of members are a little bit up in arms and how am I going to get those Institute hours? What am I going to do? I can't leave the office. I can't travel. If I wanted to travel, there's no hotels. I have a, you know, a, child with an autoimmune disorder. I don't have an institute. So it's really nice to hear that everybody's kind of on that same page and hoping that certain things come to fruition. So I just wanted to say, I think everybody's doing a great job and it's really, really nice to be a part of this today. Thank you, Kelly. And we as a department, but we as an organization also um, ditto that. So you guys are doing a fantastic job. You are tasked with making things happen that we've never had to address before. So thank you for your continued work. Thank you for your continued partnership. Um, we enjoy working with every single one of you. And if there are questions, please don't hesitate to reach out and ask. Um, we are here to support you all towards the same common goal, same common mission. So thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I did see a chat before we leave that um, we do want to talk about that director of professional development too and what you want to see in that individual, what that person will do for you and how they support your institute. So if we want to, we can build that into the next conversation and kind of make it a combo. So we're working online. How do we get there? Where are we at now in a couple weeks? But where also do we want to go in the future as a group? So if it's okay with everybody, we can send out some ideas and see if maybe we can make that potentially another three hour session, but we can kind of split it up and break it into those two components that seem to be the two big priorities. So anything else for the good of the order before we run off and start making all this happen for you? No? Okay, thank you so much, you guys. Fantastic. Um, seeing you all, please stay healthy, please stay safe. And we will be in touch most likely Monday or Tuesday with the recap and with all of the information to send out to you.
So thank you for joining us and have a great long Memorial Day weekend for those of you that are celebrating. We will see you soon. If there's anybody that wants to stay on in chat, you're welcome to stay on or drop it in the, um, in the chat box too and I'll be around for a few more minutes to answer questions. Ashley, it's um, Steve Kligger. Hi, Steve. What's going on? Hi. Okay, so I had a question. So we're basically going to, you know, we, we were scheduled for May 12th and May 13th, and we're going to cancel those. And we're basically going to uh, take those sessions and, and run them, uh, well, run, run, run one of them live online with the faculty using WebEx, you know, the same registration, verifying registration, having people sign out in person at the end so we know they were there uh, and all of that where they personally you know we see them and they say we're signing out or whatever okay. um, so if it's the same course description and everything else is there anything you would like to know in advance or discuss in advance um, just send me an email steve letting me know which okay. session is going to be taken online what okay. platform you guys are using so just tell me webex because what we'll do is we'll just save that in your historical records here at iimc and then just be sure to include it in your annual report. I know your annual report okay. tends to come a little bit later. So getting that to me ahead of time would be perfect. That way we can answer any okay. questions or address anything with people that we hear from your area. But yeah, just drop me an email, give me the details. We'll save it in our records and then we're all on the same page knowing what's going on. Okay, let me run one other thing by you. One of the sure. things that we were talking about was for, for, the, for our state certification class, but they still get IIMC credits. Mm -hmm. um, so it's land records uh, this year. And we, the attorney that teaches land records said, you know, I can't sit for six hours or two hours or three hours. He said, but I did it recently. Why don't you, you know, for the class, get everyone there live we're showing the video stop it every half hour to 45 minutes he speaks answers questions but he has a timetable of going in and out is that something that seems okay or is it problematic or i think i would just need a little bit more clarification are you talking about like a pre-recorded session that you would start and stop or a yes a pre-recorded session, session okay. that we would start and stop that he gave previously um, I think the concept is okay. My concern, though, would be continuing that engagement. So we would need, obviously, you or somebody there to make sure that conversations can still happen. Because if they're just watching a video and, you know, we're starting it and they're doing who knows what during that video, um, we, would, we would ask, and it would be our recommendation, that you continue to monitor it. And, hey, stop it. Now let's facilitate a conversation about what we just had. So yeah, no, we plan to do that. No, exactly. Okay, yeah. We plan to yeah. do that and, and also taking chat questions. And then one of us would all, we, we're going to be there 24 7 on that. Yeah, yeah um, that so sounds we, good. Steve. So we're just basically going to show a little bit of the video, and, and every half hour he would come on for 15 minutes. But then, yeah. in terms of answering questions, we'd open it up wide, but we would also help facilitate questions like, well, six clerks in the chat box had a similar question. Let me present yeah. it to you. So that's yeah, okay then? Anything. Yeah, I don't yeah. see any issues with it. Um, keep in mind that we, we ask you to keep us in the loop and we ask you to stay within yep. the guidelines, you know, in terms of how things work. But ultimately, it's your program. So okay. if you got ideas, run them by me. We'll be as sure. flexible as we can right now just because of the way things are. But if that works for you and it works for your clerks, we would rather see them learning than not learning. So if that's a model that works, by all means, give it a try and you'll figure out whether it works or whether it doesn't. In the okay, you know, that would be great. And uh, because not only are we going to make up our May session that was lost, and we'll probably do that in September, but I want yeah. to try to have our December session, you know, go, and I'm sure it's going to be online, but go on schedule. Okay. Yeah, we're good. we're all up against a big challenge. I mean, we're looking through the end yeah. of 2020. This isn't going to go away in the summer. So no, it's definitely we, not. And we look at so, it. We got to think big picture. And there's yeah. going to be a resurgence in the late fall, early winter. So I yeah. mean, I think this is going to be until there's a vaccine that's effective and everyone can get it. Um, yep. This is going to be with us a long time. Well, thanks so yep. much. Have a great Memorial Day weekend. You too, Steve. Thanks for coming. We appreciate you. Oh, my pleasure. Thanks for all you do. You guys are great. Thank you, absolutely. Have a good one. You too. Hi, Gail, you still on?
Yes, but Hi. I'm ready to go. <laughs> What's going I'm on? I'm enamored with uh, the conversation that was happening because, again, we're, we're trying to decide. Um, we have a number of different uh, instructors that, uh, you know, again, are uh, very happy and willing to jump on the bandwagon, but then we have others, you know, again, the ones in particular that do like the, um, uh, the board meet, you know, the council meeting, uh, yeah. and, you know, and then again, you know, presentations, um, but luckily though, uh, those folks are, um, uh, a number of them are CSU faculty. So we're hoping that, you know, by this time, you know, when we early on asked them, they were very not sure because of course it was right when they were moving all their uh, activities that they were used to doing face to face to uh, D2L, Zoom. Um, we do actually have uh, a, a very short 10 minute D2L video that shows how D2L is moving uh, to virtual conferences and its capabilities to do so. So I'm I'm excited about that, but it also means, you know, uh, uh, kind of having a little bit of grace from maybe instructors and participants. Um, but again, you know, one thing I mentioned is we have usually between 50, 60 participants in each of our years, and it's a three year, we go through a three year cycle. Um, and we total only have like 88 right now. and. So just that whole idea is uh, definitely wouldn't justify trying to even do the face-to-face, -face. and we probably have half of our instructors that say they prefer virtual compared to face-to-face, -face. and yeah. it's not even them, it's their organizations. So we're really trying to work through it. Um, again, we moved it to July 20th. I'm not sure if we've already shortchanged ourselves time-wise, but you know, I think a lot of it depends on, you know, the instructors and the willingness of the participants. It could end up being um, that we, you know, if they have the opportunity to make the, at least a stabilization rather than dropping off of participants, if not increasing. So, again, you know, my, um, I'm not the institute director. I actually was the institute director, but I actually um, managed the institute director, and she's, I think she's very cautious about it all. Um, she was one of my first staff, though, that you know requested to work from home because she's got and and you know uh, concerns and such like that. Um, again, it's kind of trying. To, I appreciated that screen that you put up with the you know where are you, you know, and uh, he definitely was on that fear stage. <laughs> so, um, I, myself, I I want the growth stage. Yeah. You know, I've been doing a lot of investigation when it comes to what does Minnesota State have as a platform for for Zoom? How can we, we had to run through some issues of they considered actually only um, Minnesota State employees able to use the platform. Right. But that meant, you know, our instructors who are not on the payroll, but they're, you know, maybe either paid through, um, through a business office procedure or not even paid, they're a volunteer. Uh, um, comes to a lot of sessions. Yeah. How do we get them in as you know instructors? And luckily, myself and my counterparts all across the state, you know, <laughs> probably probably because of my numerous emails and phone calls, uh, convinced them that an instructor is an instructor is an instructor. It doesn't matter yeah. if they're on the payroll. And so we had to work through some of those, you know, and that that's taken some of our time to, to you know, just um, a mentality even. Uh, but in the meantime, you know, I, I did just send um, an email to all the institute instructors and just said, you know, what is your willingness? You know, we know we have some that are, you know, easily um, – you know, transferable to virtual where others aren't, but we would help you work through the process if, you know, if you're willing to work with us. And so, you know, we're, yeah. we have a week pretty much because next Friday we have our board meeting and that's when they are going to say yes, no. Yes or no. Um, yeah. And yeah, you're up the against one, the time clock for sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, Gail, I'll tell you though, uh, I think everybody has gone through, the reason I put up that slide is that we all have to go through all of those stages. Um, when California, Pamela Miller and I talked on the phone about potentially doing something together, it was, we were talking about how so many people, you know, I don't want to go online. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it is comes out of a place of fear. So being able, I know it's not comfortable for us to say, Hey, you're red or you're blue or whatever it is. It, it, but it definitely is a way for us to do a reality check and go, okay, realistically, where am I at? Is that holding me back from servicing the people that I agreed to service? Is that holding me back from taking my own mentality forward? Where am I at? Let's just get really real. Let's call each other out, hold each other accountable for what we signed up for. So your instructors, your faculty, whether they're paid or not, they're all going through that same process that, oh my gosh, we're in trouble. What's happening? I'm scared to, okay, now I got to work through this. How do I do it? That whole processing. And then into that, okay, we're good. I got this. I'm going to at least pull the trigger and try it. So you're doing a great job. Everybody is. It's definitely a challenge to try to all work towards that same goal, knowing we all have such varying and different situations. But you and Jennifer are doing a good job. You guys make a great team. Um, so whatever you can do to keep supporting her and helping her move forward out of that fear zone and into a place where she feels good, then let me know how we can help and how we can support you. Yes, definitely. So just being on this call today, I, I, I mean, I wanted to make sure I wasn't stepping on any kind of toes or anything. So I asked her and she said, no, please, because, you know, we really need to have a team effort on this because it isn't something that, you know, one person can just take up and carry the ball to the finish line. And to be honest, we need all of the input that INC is giving us. Um, I do have some uh, um, folks that could end up being, you know, one of those um, uh, webinars that you're you're looking at. So again, you know, I'm thinking. I would love that, Gail. Yeah. I would love that. I really would. I know. I know the idea of it when we first threw it out there. Everybody's first reaction was fear zone related. I know all the responses that we got were like, "You're stepping on my business. You're you know going to take money away. You're doing this. Why are we doing this?" And it was just that fear driven response. So I know a yeah. lot of people hesitated and said no because of that. And I, I understand that. I respect it. I was there in the beginning when we canceled our conference, but I couldn't let myself sit there and say, IMC isn't going to do anything. We have a chance yeah. right now to show people that we still hear you. We still care about you. How can we do that together and bring all those other parties in? So I, I've been there, I get it, but I would love, if you are interested, honestly, we can extend that series um, and add some more onto the end and take it through August if we need to, especially if your July program gets canceled and you can't oh, end yeah. up doing it, you know, let us help you. We can work together to at least put something out, out there. Sounds perfect. So, Good. well, thank you so much. And and again, I know that, you know, Jennifer truly relies on, you know, and your quick responses are always what is so helpful for us to oh, be able My pleasure. To yeah. yeah. Absolutely, Gail. Oh. Well, have a really good weekend. It was so good to see your picture, at least, but to hear your voice. <laughs> so let me know yeah. if you need anything and look for our email next week with the recap and yeah. all the info of what's to come. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Thank you. I You're welcome. It. Bye. Okay. See Bye. ya.